listening to On The Fly. Oh, yeah. It is time. <laughs> macho Madness is here with the Redneck Macho Man. Yeah, what's up, guys? It is another episode of On The Fly. And tonight, you know what we really need right now? We need that Saturday night's main event music playing in the background while I'm doing the intro. Y'all uh, remember that? Uh, and then oh, me yeah, yeah. Talking, about, talking about how I'm going to kill Warden for liking Torpedo Girl. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, obsession. seriously, tonight. tonight emotion and emotion obsession was the name of yeah, the that was that was it. And then it, then they went away from that. I guess copyright stuff. They had to pay them too much. They 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 used a different one back in the nineties. But tonight we go where on the fly hasn't gone before. We're going into the world of wrestling. We've been telling you guys that we were going to do this, and I hope you guys like my outfit, the redneck macho man, because of the hat with the beer cans. I couldn't couldn't find the. Sorry, I couldn't find the macho man hat with the tassels and all that on it. So this is what you'll have to deal with. But tonight we do our top ten wrestlers, and tonight we've got we've got another partner in here, another fellow loudcaster. And then guys, if you don't know what the loudcasters are, then you're missing out. Uh, loudcasters are the shout out loudcast podcast, which we talk about a lot up here. It's a group on Facebook that we're all in, and uh, that's how me and Warden got got uh, together as a, as the he's my co-host now. And now we've got one of the more famous loudcasters, <laughs> Fusion Tech's own, Mr. Joe Decker. Welcome to the show, Joe. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. It's going to be a good time tonight. I love talking wrestling and, and music, so this is going to be a blast. Awesome. Yeah, we, uh, we've we been talking to Joe for a while about coming on. And uh, luckily, me and Joe got to talking one night about wrestling. And he was like, man, I am a big time old school wrestler. And I think I kind of corrupted Joe a little bit, telling him about a certain thing that happened at uh, Starcade '86, a, a wardrobe malfunction. You're to put it that did. way, you're uh, absolutely that did. out. And I don't know if Warden's aware of that or not. Uh, Warden, you had the Peacock app? No, uh, on and off. Yeah. Are you talking about the W Network? Yeah. Yeah. Next no. time when you get it, or if you do get it again, I, I'll I'll shoot you in the right direction for that wardrobe malfunction. Nikita Koloff's wardrobe malfunction. Must, a lot of people against Ric Flair. Must see TV. He, must, must yeah, he fought he fought Flair. I'll put it this way: he fought Flair. He Flair suplexed him, and yeah, there was <laughs> he showed brain. <laughs> <laughs> And it's funny because the referee, Tommy Young, one of the all-time great referees <laughs> in, in any era, he just walks by, sees it, and he just takes his hand and goes, floop, and pushes, <laughs> pushes his thing he back, back. back in. Yeah. It back in. <laughs> it's, it's, I can't believe, I honestly, when I told Joe about it, I, I couldn't believe that the <laughs> WWE Network didn't edit it out. Oh, no. It's I thought they had. You know, when you say wardrobe malfunction, I'm hoping you mean like Missy Hyatt or, you know, Precious or something, not Nikita Koloff. Unfortunately Koloff. not. Unfortunately <laughs> not. Nikita not. Koloff. So tonight we're doing our top 10 wrestlers. Our top. This is our top 10 favorite wrestlers. And we are not saying it's got to be from WWF. It's got to be from WCW. It's got to be from Crockett, Japan, wherever. Uh, AWA, man. In the AWA. House. Vern yeah. Gagne. So, Bockwinkle. Nick Bockwinkel, Larry Zabisco, Mr. Sato. Let's see who else. The Crusher, the Bruiser. What was, that? was it? What was the one? Uh, the big dudes that the Rockers finally beat. Rose. They were with Sherry. Playboy oh. Buddy Rose yeah. and Doug Summers. Oh well, my You talk God. about a. You talk about a. No, I won't go there. I mean, I'm not. I'm not a small guy myself. But my God, he how did you pass a physical? Don't you remember? Don't you remember he did that angle? Where, I say I'm sure the guy was over 300 pounds, but he got oh, introduced. Yeah. He kept getting introduced to like he was like two forty. Yeah, he made yeah. he made the guy say, "You you don't say you say two forty. Yeah. So right, yeah. right, right. So first off, let's get talking about some uh, some news going on, guys. We did our we finished up our nineties bracket today, uh, the sixty four song from May fifteenth of nineteen ninety. 
And it, the matchup, yeah, that's been 32 years. That's uh, right before Think my about it. It's my junior year in high school. Yeah. Wow. Wow. 32 years ago. So it was the championship matchup was Slaughter's up all night versus Rock Sets. It must have been love. And everybody remembers that from the Pretty Woman soundtrack. Mm -hmm. And it was probably one of the closest championship matchups up all night with 50.6% of the vote gets the championship win over it must have been love. So I'll be calling Mark Slaughter to award him his trophy. All right. Uh, Dana Strong, <laughs> all those guys. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, no, no Vinny Vincent. You can't have any. Uh, you, you got rid of them. But, yeah, 1990s was – I've been doing the 80s, but we, we went to the 1990s, and it might as well say it's, it's hard – to differentiate some of these songs from 89 to 90, but yeah, and I did have somebody make a comment. Well, this song was it was released at 89. I was like, well, it was on the chart in 1990. So there you go. Give me a yeah, break. Yeah, it was it was all 80s anyway till 92 when grunge took over anyway. So yeah. it was all feel good I, until yeah. you know, um, the dark side. Yes, Great. we talked a little bit about that last night. We, we had a little conversation, which I like now. I just hated it when I was twenty something, you know. Well, you know, there's some that I that I've heard now, but I, I'm gonna tell you this, and nothing against anybody that likes grunge because I don't belittle anybody that likes any kind of music, but I want to hear music that doesn't depress you, doesn't right. talk about cold oh, death. Death, death, and just you know, stick man, sick man. I, I just listened to Alex actually right now on my album challenge thing. It's I'm Spoon listening man. to Allison Chain. No, Allison Chain's Dirt. There's one called Sick Man on there. Oh, yeah, yep, That's yep. a good album. That's a great album. I love and, and it has been good so far. I've, I'm about halfway through it, and uh, which I know some of the songs on there, but uh, yeah, so that you know, that's going on, and we're gonna start probably. Next week, we'll start the Black Sabbath tournament, uh, 64 Black Sabbath songs. And speaking of, <laughs> and I'm just talking about depression songs and all that. Right, stuff. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Black Sabbath, though, right? Yeah. Now, are you going to include all the Sabbath years, like Ozzy, Dio, Ian Yeah, Gale? we we did. Uh, actually, I did uh, that episode. This That that was recorded before Warden come along, and it was uh, – Warren Meredith from Tame and Sorry, that band from Canada I was telling you about. And uh, mm -hmm. we did we did Dio, we did whoever. We, we didn't hold back any era. So, uh, But I think it was mostly mostly Ozzy and Dio. It, it was that, that, that era. So. Yep. Um, the, speaking, of, uh, speaking of Ozzy, if you guys haven't read his book, it's it's freaking great. I mean, it's. I did read that book a while. That, that is while that back. is the, the story about when they're recording. I think it's volume four, and they're in California, and they're uh, they don't know what air conditioner is. So they say, "Hey, why don't you turn on the air conditioner?" And they're like, "What the hell is that?" I mean, they can't remember. <laughs> they didn't have it. So they were there, and they were they had a bunch of, of course, drugs out there. Uh -huh. And so no. what they did is they uh -huh. turned on the air conditioner. And then all of a sudden, they looked out the window, and all these cop cars are coming. And he's like, and I looked at the maid, and of course, she lets them in. And he, they're like freaking out. So they start doing all these drugs to get rid of them. <laughs> but what they had done is they had tripped the alarm system that called the cops. Oh, so They just came here, oh, you tripped the alarm system for the cops. But they were talking about how the drugs they were doing and everything to get rid of them because they didn't want to go to prison. <laughs> that was one of the funniest oh things. It's like, oh. it, I mean, it's it's... it's yeah, it's just that book is great. It's like I know he did it because you can kind of tell, and it's good to see that he's bouncing back. It looks like he's going to be okay. I love surgery, surgery. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, Ozzy, Ozzy's Ozzy. I mean, yeah. you can't, <laughs> you can't get rid of that guy. No, no. He should no. have been dead years ago. But somehow, yeah, that's one thing you can you can give Sharon credit for because it's like it's like they had doctors say, "How the hell?" It's like Keith Richards. Yeah, I mean, you just, you just talk about all these people that have around him, even Mick Jagger, who's an ultimate health freak, Keith Richards, <laughs> nothing. I mean, it'll catch up with you eventually, but God, to have that life to do what he did, man, that's a that's a good long run. Absolutely. Not to speaking, mention being a great guitar player. Speaking of drugs, I told, and I don't know if I've told you about it, Warden, but I was telling Joe last night about a a YouTube channel called Botchamania. Holy smokes. 
and Macho Mania is that like Macho Mania? And what it is is these guys put together like maybe an eight or nine minute cl- uh, with clips, video with clips of people messing up in, in wrestling. And I mean, whether it's botching yeah, moves or I've calling those, the wrong yeah. names, yeah. Oh, there was one that come out. I think it came out today. And I'm sitting there watching, and you know how they always talk about the WWE, the Spanish announce table. Uh-huh. <laughs> it always gets picked on. And they were talking. Right. Yeah. They're, they they do a they're, – they're showing that, and somehow the camera is zooming in on right beside one of the guys. No lie. You need to watch it. And if you're out there, I'm giving Botchamania a plug right now. Well, beside one of the guys, there is like – white powder residue right beside him and it's like a good section of like four four lines yeah yeah and it's been done something's been done there I, whether it's powdered donuts or what i'm not accusing anybody of anything but it does not look good it does wow. not look good at the school that got past somebody i don't know wow what what is going on what how do you see the powder again the, the camera pans down right beside the guy and there's like residue from like white powder residue right beside the guy where the guy and, and it's on like a glass counter up here. Oh, he's like in a uh, locker room or something? No, he's at the announce table. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Maybe hey, man, did you ever you speak in the Spanish and Mexican wrestling? There's a they got the luchadors, they got this one. You gotta Google it. It's like this guy's fighting, and I think he's one of the guys that was in WCW there for a while, and they had all those Mexican wrestlers. Oh, yeah. And this old dude is, like, hitting him, like, in the crowd. He reaches back, and he co-cocks the old man. The old man, like, falls back. <laughs> I mean, it ain't that stuff like Terry Gordy did, like, in that world class where he pushed that guy that you see the all previous right, man walking the wrestlers out. So. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it up and share. Where's it at? The cocaine part, or yeah, was this wrestler's name Scarface, or <laughs> I don't know what what his name is. is Say hello to my little friend. Hey, you're right, He's an announcer. <laughs> wasn't Tito Santana? Wasn't he one of the announcers there for a while? Not Eva. No, I think it was that Hugo guy. They always talk about. I love it when it falls down and they're like on their back, all oh, like a turtle. Yeah, right. up and stuff. Would you believe Tito Santana is a teacher here in a school district by me? He teaches Spanish. Yeah. He yeah. Uh, he was born in a town I used to live in, Mission, Texas, down in South Texas. Okay. I remember my my dad would see him in the post office all the time during the heyday and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a um a hair salon. I think it's his wife's called Santana's down not too far, like two miles away. I mean, he was always in shape, but I saw he got he was on something. Was it with Joey Casada? Yeah. Yeah. TV? Boy, put on some, I mean, pounds, but I was like, yeah, wow. he's, he's just, little... it's just weird to see him that way because he was always in shape, you know. Right. He hit him with the Ariba, too. Ariba, yeah. I forgot that I forgot Tom Zink died. Yeah, I yeah. didn't. I, you know, you hear about a wrestler and there's been so many, then you go back and like, oh, he's dead because wasn't Tom Zink? Was that Rick Martell? They were the Can Am connection, Can Am connection, and then he were, didn't Rick Martell replace him. Before well, Martell went to the freaking Martell went Zink. to the model and stuff, which is Zink left. Deal. Was that Tom Zink left like the height of their popularity, right? Yeah. Okay, and they re, they rebranded and they rebranded them. Yeah, I remember that. And then Tito came along. Yeah. Where is that freaking thing at? Was that pre Martel Garcia? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, no, that was after you talk about Garia. Yeah, or Tony Garia. Garia. Yeah, Tony Garia. Oh yeah, yeah that's yeah, right. That's that WWF. Way, that was way after him. Okay. Yeah, that's WWF. That's yeah. Yeah, he was Tony uh, Garia. I remember that one. Yeah. Oh. They were one of my first favorite tag teams, those two, when I was a kid. Man, you uh been watching it longer than I have. Uh, I, I got I discovered the Von Erics living in Texas, of course. So it's, okay, right, was, right, right. Yeah. Okay. I'm 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 trying to find this right quick and then I'm gonna share it on the screen. And I know I wasn't imagining things, by the way. So it wasn't that a dream. Was messed up though. After you told me about it last, I probably watched an hour of those things last night before bed. <laughs> you can't even believe it. it's it's funny. It's comical, and they do a good job of mashing those up. And, and their their editing is fantastic. Yeah, it is. They do a really good job. But, uh, job. What's the one where the guy's like trying to drop kick and he goes through the ropes? There's one yeah. like that. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or either he fought, they fall off the ropes, and you, you get to see how they 
how they uh, try to cover it up. All the ones I can't watch, the fun they're funny when they miss, but when they hurt somebody, like that one with uh, who was it? Like when Austin gets pow drive by Owen Hart. Owen. That, oh, yeah, that, yeah. And yeah. it was the one where that guy got draws, draw, draws got oh, paralyzed. That was by, uh, yeah, yeah, that was D yeah. I never actually saw the clip of it happening. I saw like mm. him laying in there, but I don't think I ever saw the clip of it actually happening. Or the Sid Vicious one. Ooh, oh, he broke Sid his ankle. With Sid yeah. broke his ankle. Yeah, oh, that was nasty. Mm. That was horrible. I prefer the, I prefer the old days when Dusty Rhodes is stopping by the gas station, the horseman jumping. You know that that that's good old family fashion. <laughs> Back then, when people would actually think that the thing was real, it's like, oh, you better call the cops. <laughs> Yeah, they 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 jumped him in the Crockett Promotions parking lot one time, and, I, and he was like, "Make it good, make it yeah. good." And the way he was <laughs> screaming, "Ah, ah!" Like he was giving birth like or something. Like I was like, "What uh, are sorry. they doing?" And then they and then they they blacked it out, the, yeah. the arm out, so they wouldn't have you to see clean. Dusty's gut hanging over. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, I remember back burning. in the day when uh, watching wrestling as a kid, like on Saturday mornings. Oh, you yeah. know, way back in the day. And if there was ever blood, they'd put a big X across the screen. So yeah. You could see it, you know. I remember one night, um, gosh, I was about fifth grade. And uh, strangely, I was in the hospital for, my, for appendicitis. And I woke up about 11 o'clock at night, the black and white TV in the hotel room. And it was the night that Sabisco, Larry Sabisco fought Bruno San Martino. Turned on him. Oh, wow. Him open, and Bruno was bleeding profusely. They put a big X across the TV screen. I'm reading about it later on. That's back when people thought wrestling was like real and took it real serious. Like they Sabisco was scared for his life leaving that stadium because the fans were so just crazed about what he had done yeah. that he needed like security to get himself out of there alive. And yeah, well, the time how many times did like Piper get stabbed in the parking lot going out and stuff? Hey, that was have... that was near uh, near me. That was in North Carolina. I think that was at uh Dorton Arena in Raleigh. Is that you, Stevie? Were you like a little yeah. eight year old? I was, I was like <laughs> I was probably like five or six years old <laughs> wielding a knife. Come here, Piper. <laughs> I was told by uh I'm gonna throw out a little podcast love to the guys over there at, at Playlist Wars. I was told by Brian from Playlist Wars that if we didn't have Roddy Piper on our list, he was boycotting uh, on the fly. Oh, boy. So he might have to boycott on the fly as far as my I, part goes. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Man, I'm ready to get into the list, Stevie. All right, so we're going to forget about this for now. I'll come across it in just a minute. Yeah. So, tonight. Tonight. Top 10 favorite wrestlers. And this is our list. And now, like I say, with all the lists we do, this is our list. You can tell us we did wrong. That's fine. It, like somebody always says, yeah, it, it's a good list, but it's wrong. It's still wrong. You right. know, Zeus says that all the time about everybody's list. Um, yeah, list the only the only correct list is your own. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you have a better list, please share it with us. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. Uh, so any social media, email it to us. We'll give you the email address, and we'll share it up here and share your list. But uh, if, are we gonna go uh, like? Are we gonna go from like ten to one and like? Yeah. If like yeah. somebody's on somebody's list, we say, "Hey, that's my number thing." Or are we just gonna yeah, do our own? Yeah, we we'll just like we'll cancel it out if okay. if somebody like got we do on the count like the the album reviews and stuff. Exactly. We'll do right. same same way we do we usually do. Obviously, tonight, folks, you can see we're well together, and we've got our our, our we'll play the agenda stuff. ahead. So we're yeah. meeting on the we do everything on the fly. We do everything on the fly. It's pretty oh, pretty oh. good. Well, let's get it started. And since he is our guest, Mr. Decker will go first. We'll All right. Again. All right. Well, strangely enough, you are wearing the costume <laughs> of my number ten. Um, yes, there Ooh, it is. Yeah. Oh yeah. Number 10, I have the Macho Man himself, Randy Savage. Randy All right, Savage. Warden, you have him on your list? Yeah, he's my number six, a little bit higher for me. I I, I was always a heel fan. Mm -hmm. I, I I, mean, I, well, we'll get into why when I talk about my number 10, how everything kind of changed. But when Savage went on the scene, I mean, I'm taking this he off. was perfect for WWE F. He, I mean, he had the, he had the, the great moves. 
he had the chick that yeah. I remember when, when all the managers were coming out here scouting him. Yeah. Yeah. And he brought Elizabeth out and yeah. I remember my buddy going all that. Yeah, that's his wife. I'm like, what? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, and everything and they were married before, but man, that girl was stunning. And I just, it's just Beautiful another one girl. gone too soon. Gone too but soon. Nope. That, that whole storyline. I love the storyline when like they were together then yeah. they broke up. Then Sherry Martell came in. And then when she came in to save him that time when they were beating him up, oh, yeah. like, I got chills. That whole scene was just amazing. You know, I love that. And and like you said, it, it you know, shame, just just another one just gone way too soon. And then when you hear her story and read about her, it's like, wow, what a messed up. The things that go on behind the scenes that, you know, when, when you're when you're a kid, you're oblivious to it all. You didn't even yeah. know what's happening back there. You know, the, and, and these guys are like larger than life. Then you hear the real story about what's happening. It's mm -hmm. just, uh, it's crazy. I remember the big rumor back in the day was uh, that Elizabeth was uh, actually um, George the Animal's daughter. That was the big, that was the big uh, <laughs> rumor I remember going around for a long time. But um, I remember with, I remember with Macho Man that he, those bandanas he had mm -hmm. would make Paul Stanley proud around that era. Oh and yeah. He, there's, oh, there's yeah. pictures of me with the, like the animal print and it wasn't because of Kiss, it was because of Macho Man. There because I would have all those stuff, the glasses, Mm -hmm. I mean, he was there probably for a while. My favorite wrestler. He just he was Me just too. so un. Me too. And when he and he when he teamed with Hogan, I hated it so much. Yeah. Me too. But when he started, you know, when when the honky tonk man went out there and hit yeah. and he hit Savage with that thing, Elizabeth yeah. came out there yeah. and she yeah. grabbed Hogan. I got that was pretty cool. That was cool. That, he started. That, they started fighting over her. I was like, oh, I love this. I love cool. the Savage. You know that. That was, that was, was he was just a better heel than he was a good guy. Agreed. Yeah, that was Saturday night's main event. Yes. I remember staying up and watching it that night. And then you see, of course, you see Hogan come out there mm -hmm. and doing the whole and comes out there to the <laughs> ring. And, and, they, that face. and, and then they, yeah. they do the, the little handshake where they act like they're going to blow up when, yeah. once right. they shake hands. The mega powers were born. Right, yeah. But to hear the story, that was the whole thing, the whole year, that whole next year was planned out in advance. You know, Savage turning on Hogan and mm -hmm. then WrestleMania 5, Hogan versus Savage. But the thing with Savage that got me, he he didn't have to reinvent himself. But WWF at the time was ready to just put him doing yeah. commentary. They yeah. thought, you know, Vince was like, well, you know, you're, you've are you lost a step. You don't. Then he gets to WCW. What wins multiple World Heavyweight Championships there. Stays. Stays. You know, puts on a great program with DDP, makes DDP the the high profile wrestler he was because of that program. Uh, but Savage, I mean, Savage could go. I mean, there was no doubt about it. Savage, and Savage was tough for a guy. You know, Savage wasn't the biggest dude. I mean, he was big, muscular. But mm -hmm. He wasn't the biggest dude, and he could hang with any of those guys. Yeah, you, know, you saw how he a pitching prospect for the St. Louis Cardinals. Do you know that he uh, he was wrestling while he was a member of the Cardinals, and he had to wrestle under a mask yeah. as the, he was ca called himself the Spider. And then it's kind of ironic that he's in the Spider Man movie wrestling. You know, God, he was jacked in that movie. Yeah, he Buzzsaw. Was. Oh my God, he was yeah. huge. He was. Buzzsaw is really. <laughs> I, and I remember hearing about him dying, and it's like. I was listening to Lanny, his brother, talk about he had finally yeah. like he got back together with his high school sweetheart. It was just that's, that's just, isn't that just life? Once you get everything figured out, it's it, just it. it, it, it it's you yeah, over, you know? yeah, yeah. You know, Is he on I, your list? Is he on your list, yeah, Stevie? List, Steve? Yeah, he's number seven on my list. Okay, okay. but he, you know, like I, I told jo Joe last night, my number one's pretty set, but two through like. Two through like nine could flip flop anyway. My number yeah. ten is pretty set, but uh, My, mine's like that too. You would ask me a couple of years ago, I was dead set on one, but in recent years things have changed. Yeah. So, yeah. so who's your number ten, Ward? My number ten is where it all started for me. Ooh. I had no idea who the hell these guys were. I remember seeing Hulk Hogan in um, Rocky Three. You know when he fought when he Thunder fought. Uh, Thunder hips, lips, really? whatever. Thunder lips, not hips. That, that's not Hogan's <laughs> not in my top ten. So. But this is the he was my favorite out of the brothers. They did everything from like car commercials to Pizza Inn commercials down here in Texas. There was nothing bigger in the eighties in Texas than the Von Ericks. Oh, Carrie was always the one that chicks dug and Mike. I always like Kevin because Kevin was a brawler. 
Mm -hmm. And he was my number 10. He was my, he was my favorite Von Eric because they had this thing up in Dallas. My grandmother lived in Dallas and they had like a local two hour, every Saturday night, a local two hour world-class show on local act. And I would just fly up here because I had flying privileges back then when my mom worked for Southwest. I'd come up and just watch that. Mm -hmm. But it would I mean the monarchs were huge in Dallas. Yeah. And it was just like, he was my favorite. And I love the storyline he did with Chris Adams and Gary Hart. When Chris Adams brought in Gary Hart, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this. Oh yeah. And Chris Adams super kicked and turned um, turned against the Von Erics, and then mm -hmm. he joined up with Gino Hernandez. That was some of the best. I mean, world class was great until they left the NWA. When they tried to yeah. stand on their own and they quit, they lost Flair as the title holder, and they tried to do all that stuff. They totally went to hell. And but man, there was nothing better. Like the Von Erics were. I was always a Kevin Von Erich fan, and. Sadly, he's the only one still alive today. Right, I, mean. right. I remember, you know, of course, I didn't have cable. We were in our small town. We were we had three channels. Yeah. But the only way I had any kind – when I got into wrestling, I was in, like, big time. And every time we go to the grocery store or the pharmacy yeah. or whatever, I was picking up magazines. wrestling magazines and yeah. reading about the Von Erics. And, yeah. Yeah. Three, three months behind. Yeah. yeah, we were way behind, but – but, you know, that was the way we kept up with yeah. all the other stuff around. And then I finally got to see a little bit. I think the first time I remember seeing, I think it was Kerry when he did the unification match with Lawler, the AWA, and the and uh, was it, it was still world class then, wasn't it? Yeah, that's 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 way after they left the NWA. They had a yeah, falling out. So they, with, they did the unification yeah. match with, with Lawler. That's the first time I remember. And then Kerry – because Kevin and them never really came to WWE or anything like that. Uh, they stuck with world class. But Kerry, when he came to WWF as Texas Tornado, you know, and he he kind of they gave him his they gave him his big moment when he beat Mr. Perfect for the mm -hmm. Intercontinental, and then they kind of just moved him back. And I think Kerry had demons. Kerry had a lot of yeah. demons, yeah. and uh, you know that that motorcycle wreck, whether that had a lot to do with it or not. It had a prosthetic leg that came off. You remember hearing about that came off in a match in the shower? Yeah, he was. You'd, he'd, he'd shower with the boot on or something like that because people yeah. wouldn't know. Yeah, he um, had demons way before that because that's why they put the belt on him for like only two weeks. Yeah, because he was no showing events. That's a, that's according to Ric Flair's book. Wow. Yeah, and that he just yeah, wow. he actually called his he actually called Kevin if you watch that world class thing saying that he was going to kill himself. Oh boy! And he had a he had like Lacey and his wife. He had a young child and everything. And it's I think he just got busted for forging prescriptions or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he did. There's different stories about him, but yeah, man, it, it it's it's sad that it you know. Sad. And I think it's sad that Kevin never really went to like even the AWA or I think no, Kevin you know, would have been great in Mid South or you know something like that. But I mean, he they didn't need to back then because Daddy ran the promotion. Yeah, but even when they did the whole working with the AWA and stuff like that. He never, you never really saw him show up there. You know, yeah. it was always Kerry, but, and I think, and I, and I honestly think out of all of them, he was the best out of all of them next to David. Uh, is know, there I mean, a dark David, side David about them? Huh? Is there a dark side episode about, about that, about the Von Eric family? Dark side uh, of the ring. Yeah. yeah. There's a, there's a documentary. I think it's on Peacock about world class. WWE. Is there yeah. a dark? I don't know if there's a dark side. I don't on. think they've done one yet. Do, WWE did a documentary called Rise and Fall of World Class Championship Wrestling. Yeah, like like David Manning. It, it might yeah. have been on there. I saw that whole that whole their, their whole family. It's just tragic. It's tragic. Yeah. Dark side. Dark side had a Gino Hernandez episode. I think. Yeah, they've had a Gino one. Yeah, yeah. That was that, that, was that really death, good. man. Still, man, that's because he that, you he talk was, about it. You talk about it. Could have been. He oh. was he like like me and Warden talked about the one time he could have been a really yeah. good horseman and yeah uh you know I don't know who you would have left out of the horse maybe Oli but uh, right right Gino you put Gino and Tully on and, and Rick oh oh man forget about well, yeah Tully and Gino wrestled down here and Tully yeah dad they were a tag South, team Southwest Championship Wrestling you know it's so funny about they talk about Southwest Championship Wrestling and. You talk about how the WWF was back then, and mm -hmm. you see the Bushwhackers, but down here yeah. they were they were called the, the Sheep Herders. They were bloody as they were like Mick Foley hardcore before they, 
Yeah. I mean, they were, I mean, it was like, and now every and, match was blood. They right, had blood in it. Right. And the rock and roll, I think they, I don't know who it was they fought, but man, there was like some pretty boy. I don't know if it was the Fantastics or the Fantastics. Yeah, but man, they they held their own with them. The Fantastics were pretty damn tough. Fantastics too. had a big feud in the in Mid South with them, and uh, yeah. they were it was bloody. Yeah, oh, but oh, right oh. before right before they left WC, well, it was still in WA then for and became the Bushwhackers. There was supposed to be a they were starting a feud with the Rock and Roll Express, and then that the story I heard from from Bobby Fulton when I interviewed him was that was going to lead to, you know, when, once Sheep Herders left, I guess they were going to do like a, say try to save the Rock and Roll Express, the Fantastics were. Mm -hmm. Then they were going to turn on the Rock and Roll Express. The Fantastics were, were going to go heel and have Paul Jones as their manager. Wow. Who was going to go heel? The Fantastics? The Fantastics. Yeah, wow. you could make the Rock and Roll Express heels. That just wouldn't have worked. Oh, they, they have wrestling yeah. heels. Yeah. Yeah, but Ricky Morton, he the women loved him too much. Yeah, he was just he a, did look, yeah. he turned on Gibson. Remember that? Yeah. He he joined yeah, that but, he joined that York Foundation and became Richard Morton. When was that? When was that later? I guess I could watch it. And look, listen, listen. I, I don't mean any harm. I don't mean any harm, but the York Foundation. Good <laughs> idea. It's a good idea. They they started off with Rotunda. Uh and and then he left and went to WWF to be Irwin or Shyster. Right, right, um, right. So then they bring Terry Taylor in and start calling him Terrence Taylor. Uh, so they start building the stable. Richard Morton comes next. Right. Okay, that's that's okay. But when you, you're talking about this computerized <laughs> foundation and all this, you bring freaking Tommy Rich into the freaking York Foundation as Thomas Rich, one of the biggest rednecks you've ever seen out there. And he's <laughs> he's a computerized man though now. Was this w, was this WCW? <laughs> was this WCW or what? Yeah. You know, they had a girl. The girl was in there. Was, she called herself Alexandra York. Well, it was Terry Runnels. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Terry Runnels was Alexandra York. And that was that was about the time she was just getting ready to get married to Dustin Rhodes. Okay. Oh, wow. But, yeah. So, yeah. It was, so it was it Kevin Von so Eric on y'all's list? Oh, no. 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 No, nope. I didn't no. have them on my list. No, I did not either. Well, but, you're wrong. Just kidding. I know. <laughs> <laughs> my my number ten spent some time down in world class championship wrestling. He had several different names down in world class championship wrestling. He spent some time in WCW. Of course, WCW, like a lot of these guys, didn't know how to use him. Shockmaster. Yeah, oh. the Shockmaster. <laughs> you know, that's actually tugboat, right? Yeah, he was big bubba yeah. down here in Southwest. Yeah, yeah. So this guy ends up showing up at Survivor Series 1990, makes his debut, and the rest is history. I'm talking about you can call him the Master of Pain, you can call him Texas Red, you can call him Mean Mark Callis, but everybody mm -hmm. knows him as the Undertaker. Oh, wow. nice, nice. Okay. I mean, what can you say about this guy? He had that undefeated streak at WrestleMania, which. Yeah, and I was telling Joe about this about Mick Foley's podcast. It's great, by the way. I, I mean, if you guys like Mom. listening to wrestling podcast, Foley yeah. is Foley is pod, and Mick Foley talks about you know how Undertaker fought for Foley because when Vince brought Fo Foley in as mankind, it was all to make Jim yeah. Ross say, I, "I I want to see your face when one of your boys lets you down." He didn't believe him. And then Undertaker said, put him with me. And that was the rest was like history. But Foley made a good point about the WrestleMania streak. He said, I'm not trying to downplay the WrestleMania streak, but the way it started was not the strongest thing. I mean, when you got guys like he fought Snooker, Snooker was past his prime. Yep. He fought Jake the Snake. Jake the Snake was on the way out. Yep. Uh, King Kong Bundy. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, stuff like that. until he got to Foley, to mankind, that's when he really, everything started stepping up. And, you know, not to diminish the streak or anything, because that streak was awesome. But to but see it was a cool guy to see, like. It was cool to see Brock beat it, though, because it shocked people. It, nobody thought that that would happen in a million years, and it made Brock look stronger. 
And I think it was, I, I'm, I'm the only minority that, you know, that let me tell like you it, this. I thought, it, I thought it was great. Let me tell you this about Brock. Brock had every chance in the world to be, you know, incredible. If he just, he wouldn't be a part-time guy, you know, you know, WWE's big, one of their big mistakes you put the belt on so many part-time guys that don't show up. Mm-hmm. Look at Flair. Look at Flair back in the and – and this even goes back to the 80s. Hogan, Hogan – Hogan. I mean, Hogan didn't defend his belt that much. Right. Not, he'd do it – you didn't have pay-per-views every month then. You had it like every four – it was like every quarter. Yeah. Um, Flair was up there all the time defending his belt. Look at the Great American Bash, like 86. Yeah, but- he had to do it like – what twenty times in in twenty it's, some days? But it's a different time. Because oh yeah, I mean, but that's but, why but they I, that's why they bring back Goldberg and Brock because the stars just aren't. I mean, you for every Roman Reigns, you. Yeah. I mean, and look at Randy Orton. I mean, look at. Yeah. I mean, they brought Brock Lesnar back because Randy Orton got hurt. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the women's division is what's. I will is say this stars. About, I will say this the, about the Lesnar men's now. It's not. I'll say this about Lesnar now. I was shocked how much I enjoyed him as a baby face. This last I like time. his new character. He yeah. was funny. Yeah. He reinvented himself. I never thought he could do it on his own without having somebody there to talk for him. But yeah. he was great. And if he ke- keeps it like that, I will be, I'll pull for Brock Lesnar. But, you know, just part time stuff. It's got to go. Give, putting the belts on the part time is Yeah, hurt. but they got to develop more stars. I mean, it's. They've got they don't, every they don't, in the world to do it, but they keep. Yeah, they but keep they, that's why they got to bring them back. I don't think they have it. I, I really. That's why you know people like Jericho. That's why these older guys are still. It's kind of like rock music. That's why the Kisses and the Stones are still out there because the new music it just. It's not. It's true. It's not what it is now. And and, and wrestling. I mean, if Vince does sell, I think uh, Jim Cornette. He has got a podcast. Yeah, he said it's yeah. done, and he's right. I mean, I I think so. But the WWE to get off the subject. Their best part of them is their women's division because you have like that girl with the hair or whatever. I mean, those are cool to watch. Bianca. Yeah. Yeah. Bianca. I mean, those they are, are like, cool those are superstars, not the they're, men, though. They're fun, though, but a lot of those matches look like that botchamania. You can see them making mistakes yeah, all over the place, you know, and it's it's almost like embarrassing sometimes. Like I was watching the Maybe I'm not paying attention to the match and just. Well, that's true. <laughs> You're distracted. Okay, I admit you got me on that one. You're right. <laughs> but I agree with you. I mean, it's yeah. We were talking about this last night, Steve and I, a little bit. Like you know, um, I still enjoy it, but it isn't like it, it's 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 like you, your analogy was perfect. That's why we like Kiss and the Rolling Stones because there's nothing out there today that's like you know yeah. as as good or as relevant. And to watch it, I, I watched Raw there tonight. I have to watch it on Hulu after because I can't stand watching it live because. It's it's three matches and an hour and a half of just ridiculous banter. The characters yeah. aren't good, storylines aren't good. You know, it's just like, and once in a while you get a good match, once in a great while. And like you said, these pay per views are all the time now. It used to be like you look forward to WrestleMania once a year, Starcade once a year. Now it's like once a month. You got this yeah, Money yeah. in the Bank thing coming on now, the Hell in the Cell, which was terrible this year. You know. Um, it's it's just not what it was, but I, I'm I'm with you. I, I I had Undertaker down as my number four, you know, um, because he was, oh, wow. well, I loved his character when he came in, and for a man that big to move like he moved across those, you didn't see that he was the first guy you saw that was that size, you know, he was every bit as big as like a, a almost like a big John Studd or not quite yeah. an Andre or as big as a Hulk Hogan, but very yeah. agile. It had mobility to, to to move across that ring, grab that guy by the arm, and then walk across those walk ropes. ropes. Yeah. And, and his character was, I thought, cool as hell. You know, I liked him more when he was the dead man as opposed to the biker. Yeah. I liked him better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, um, it was creepy. Then the whole Kane thing came in. Um, yeah, I, he, he was one of my favorites. And that the whole Attitude Era was like my favorite time in the WWE. I, I love that whole period when he was in there. So he's way up there on my list as well. I'm that, not. He's he's not on my list, but he is a cowboy fan. He is. Oh, a, he is. I didn't know he that. is a University of Texas fan. Okay, I like him even more now. Look at and you. I think probably, I mean, and his acting chops in Suburban Commando were just, <laughs> I mean, out of this world. <laughs> yeah. But Undertaker was cool. I saw the Survivor Series here back in the '90s. It was '94. Mm-hmm. It was the one here in San Antonio when I think Owen. 
convinced his parents to throw in the yeah uh -huh. the towel oh, the, towel oh, but the undertaker was fighting oh, yokozuna mm -hmm. he had the coolest intro i mean it was like the ending of a kiss concert it was like you know it was like rain going on i mean right the gimmick stuff was never really my kind of thing you know but i i mean i've always respected the undertaker i think he would probably be in my top my top 15 maybe yeah yeah and yeah. that is and this this will be a probably a uh well i've got another one at wcw didn't know what to do with how to use him and he goes on to bigger and better things and and well it's actually three of them actually uh oh, yeah you talk Gee, I about, wonder who you're talking about stevie you talk about There's when so he many. <laughs> you talk about when he uh he fought Yokozuna. One of my favorite moments with him and Yokozuna, it was at the Survivor Series. I think it was in 94. And, well, maybe it was before that. But anyway. That was the Yokoz match I was – that was that was Survivor Series. It was Yokozuna carries him outside the ring uh -oh. and bangs his head, bangs his head on the steps. And Undertaker just does that look at him. And you see, I mean, I'll give it to Yokozuna. Just, it's entertainment and all that. But the look on Yokozuna's face is like the fear of God. Great right. acting. He right. looks like he's got the fear of God come in. Yeah. When yeah. It, when he did happened. that. He did that too, where the, the the he took off the hat and the lights went yeah. off. And he looked at Yokozuna and he did this. And Yokozuna like sold it real well. He fell down. I yeah. love, I just love when he, he would take the hat off and then you know the lights when he would just do his hand yeah. like this. Boom. The oh. lights would so cool. Yeah. So great cool. interest. And he got and, burned. Uh, he got he got real burn rolled. He got really burned. I think he did get burned one time. But yeah, just uh, you know, as mean mark, he was part of the skyscrapers with Danny Spivey. He took Sid's place in, in WCW. And they actually Paul Heyman actually managed him in WCW when he yeah. was mean mark. Okay. But yeah, and to see him come out months later, and I was like, that's mean Mark. And I was like, well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty right. scary. All right. All right. Number nine for Mr. Joe. Number nine. Okay. Remember when guys had the title and held on to it forever? Like they had – remember okay, Bob Backlund held that title for like eight years. And you never Bruno knew. did. Back then, it was just like – um you got to see wrestling on Saturday. That was it. And if you if, if a title changed, you read about it in a magazine somewhere, you know, like I said, three months after the fact, you know. But I remember clearly when this guy came in, because I thought for sure Backlund was going to drop the belt to him, um, and it is the Superfly. Mm. Jimmy, Jimmy Snooker. Jimmy Superfly. Snooker. When he came in, I'll never forget seeing – reading in the magazines, he was coming to WWF and being so excited because, like, like you, I didn't have good cable. I didn't get – all thing I got was WWF. I didn't get AWA, a, 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 not later on until NWA, so – Snooker was only in magazines to me. I saw this guy. I thought, this guy is unbelievable. Still shots of him flying off the top rope. I mean, now, the now that, that's common play now. You see that in every match. Every guy does that now. But back when he was doing it, you know, it was just insane. That's um, the one where Foley's in the shot, right? Yeah, he's, Foley's in the crowd. Yeah, he's unbelievable. In the crowd. Yes, unbelievable. And That was on a Morocco, wasn't it? Don Morocco? Don Morocco. Yeah, off, that's off, it. Off, off, that is the square guard, off the top of that mm -hmm. cage, you know. And, and I like Snooker way better as a heel with, with Captain Lou as his uh, as his manager, then remember the whole Piper's Pit thing, Piper smacking with coconut, coconut and everything, all that crazy stuff went on, and then Buddy Rogers came in, and then he turned good, and um, but uh, and then he went. I always like I, I didn't like Snooker barefoot. I like Snooker with the boots on. I didn't like the yeah. barefoot Snooker. I like the, the big boots on and the crazy frizzy hair. I like when he was like that. And um, you didn't like him on Hulk Hogan's Rocket Wrestling Connection. Gosh, That's Warden, that is scary because that just popped in my head before <laughs> oh, you said that too. You know, I was so hungry for wrestling, I'd watch reruns of that shit because I yeah. just loved wrestling, and I didn't have cable either. <laughs> I mean, we get we get like WWE super WWF superstars, yeah, you know, you know, and like that. But I mean, and I hated wrestling back then is because you actually like after a WrestleMania, you had to wait a week. Yeah. There was they didn't yeah. report on the news, you know. There was no internet. There was nothing. There was nothing about it. And 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 the thing about it was, it was so frustrating. Was as a kid, you know, back in the late seventies, um, you didn't. There was never like a set time frame. You got lucky. I, you know, it, wrestling was always on yeah. Saturday morning, Sunday morning, or late Saturday night, but never on a CBS. Set 
so I'd be going through channels yeah. trying to yeah. find it. And yeah. I, I come across it usually by accident, you know, usually yeah. by accident. And the matches were terrible. I mean, they they were just they were the worst. But um, um, yeah. But anyway, with Snooker, that was that was he was my guy. Then to hear about that whole story with him later on, with that thing yeah. in Allentown with that girl, and and then watching the Dark Side episode, and yeah. I actually met him. Gosh, at an autograph signing. I took my kids to a zoo, okay, and and we walk into this zoo. No idea he's even going to be there. And as we're walking in, there's a picture of him from back in his heyday, you know, appearing today, signing autographs to Superfly. I said to my wife, I said, holy – I said, I'm, I'm going nuts, you know. I'm like, I can't believe this. I'm like, where is he? Where is he? It was like 10 bucks for an autograph, and there's this little wow. man sitting at a table, a little, tiny little man wow. sitting there. I would have never, even, maybe I'd have recognized him, but I mean, there he just sat there and and looking just horrible, you know. And then the whole thing with that came out about, I remember hearing, hearing that story about uh, that when in Allentown when that happened, but uh, tragic. But even with all that, I thought he was just an amazing talent, super gifted and super entertaining, and that's why he's on my my number nine. I, I, I he was he was probably my favorite wrestler as a kid, you know, in the. Right. In the late 70s early 80s he was probably my favorite guy yeah yeah that the first time i remember seeing snooker was like warden said uh the rock and wrestling hulk hogan's rock and wrestling and then he he you know he he was the third man at wrestlemania one outside the ring with hogan and mr t so yeah i remember seeing that so i only knew snooker as a good guy yeah and then later on you know you see the the stuff with uh him as a heel um <laughs> Speaking of Hulk Hogan's rock and wrestling, did you know that song that they played at? That was Hulk Hogan's original theme song. Yep. You know who the who Real American was supposed to be for? Barry Windham and Mike Rotunda. Yep. Wow. U.S. Express. Wow. Wow. And American, they left. Windham they tried with American Express, but they had to leave home without it. U.S. Express. U.S. Express. Yeah. Then when Windham left, Hogan took the song, and the rest is history. Wow. Rick right. Derringer thanks him. Yeah, exactly. You're number nine, my, Warden. My number nine, I don't think it's going to be on you guys' list, like my number was, 10. Was it on your list at all, or not? was it on either one? No, it wasn't on my list. list. Okay. My Mine is, I don't know, you guys may kind of groan at this one, but right. oh, is this I be like this girl? guy. I like this guy. I like this guy, and since the 90s. Okay. When he came out, it was Shawn Michaels' bodyguard, Kevin Nash. Oh, I think Kevin okay. Nash is one of the. I, I just think he's he's somebody that was given an impossible thing when he beat Backlund. You know, I mean, they were talking about how you know he didn't draw any, but Bret Hart didn't draw. Shawn Michaels really didn't draw. Wrestling was kind of in that deal, but I thought it was a, gr a great, great move for Kevin Nash. I thought. When him and Scott Hall went to the NW, uh, the WCW, that was a great angle. The NWO got yeah. way too big, but I kind of, I kind of went between this one and Kevin Nash and Scott Hall because mm -hmm. I went between these two to put in my top ten. But Kevin Nash was always my dude. I just, I like the guy. Yep. I hear the guy talk in interviews. He's very smart. Yep. I just think that I liked him in TNA. You know, mm -hmm. I thought. I mean, I watched TNA for a long time. I, I like TNA. Yeah. The wrestling too, and you know, <laughs> it, Kevin Nash was always just, just always. And when him and Shawn Michaels had that feud, and I remember that happened here in San Antonio when Shawn Michaels took up and ran, and he took off like when he hit, he hit super, he hit Kevin Nash or something, and he super took kicking. off. But then when Kevin Nash came back and saved Shawn Michaels after Sid Vicious and turned Shawn Michaels' yeah. face, right, 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 and that there. But I, 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 I'm a big fan of the Click. Gotcha. I a lot of people hate didn't like them and stuff, but I back back in the nineties I was so NWO all for NWO that was DX. Yeah. Kevin is my guy. Cool. Oh, Nash didn't make my list, but either, you know, I knew it. But I like he him. was. <laughs> you know, just like you said, when they Vince thought Vince saw him as the next Hulk Hogan. That's why he, he had him beat Backlund in what like ten seconds, five. Yeah, something like that, you know, yeah, five, ten. So he he wanted that to be the next Hulk Hogan, and 
Nobody has been able to do that. Nope. War, they wanted Warrior to be the next Hulk Hogan. Yeah, he couldn't do it. Luger, uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he Vince saw dollar signs, and it wasn't fair to Kevin Nash. But Nash did a good job as Diesel with the belt. Oh, I thought so, too. Uh, yep. I thought that match my were... favorite, my favorite ever anything that that Nash did was with the outsiders with him and Scott Hall. I when mean, they they, they off to the table. That was great. Amazing. No, no pun intended. They clicked. No yeah. pun intended. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you they had they were funny. Yeah, they were good heels because they were funny, but they were deadly too. I mean, yep. they they were it was just awesome. But Nash did not make my list. So my number nine. This is a guy that this could, yeah, I would say WCW didn't know how to use him. Uh, and he goes on to bigger and better things with WWE. I mean, he was the first undisputed world heavyweight champion. Uh, and I'm talking about the one and only Ayatollah of rock and roller. Uh, Raw is Jericho. Uh, I'm talking about Chris Jericho. I mean, Jericho. what can you say about this guy? Uh. He, when he turned heel in WCW, it was the best move he's ever made. I liked him when he was a babyface when he first come in. I, you know, this guy comes in from ECW, Lionheart Chris Jericho. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you know, I liked the way he wrestled and and he had a good look. Well, then when he turned heel, I just remember one night watching Nitro, mm -hmm. and he was having a feud with Dean Malenko, Man of a Thousand Holds. Yeah, and Jericho gets out there with a list. After his match, he's got – and back then with that computer paper that was like, you know, it just fed off of it. It wasn't like you just put it in there. It was speedy. <laughs> he had – he was reading off a list of his holes. They went to commercial. They came back. He was still in the ring reading his holes. <laughs> Number 998. <laughs> but, you know, and the, and the things he did in WCW with – uh Look with Mysterio with uh, what was it, Hooven Guerrero when he took his mask off and had that. Remember the bodyguard he had, Ralphus? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> then, but then the night he debuts in WWE and he, him and Rock go at it back and forth, mm -hmm. that was classic. And some of the things he said to Stephanie McMahon over the years, oh, oh. You would not be able to get away with it this day and time. Yeah. And he keeps right on going. I mean, he keeps right yeah, on but going. Then, today. then like, a, this is how versatile he was. And later on the route, he'd be on her side. Yeah. Oh, he'd yeah. Defending her. You know. Yeah. Uh, Jericho made my number four. He's my number yeah. four guy. Yeah. I, yeah. I knew of Jericho in WCW. But when I really got to know him is when he used to write for Metal Edge magazine. Oh, okay. And yeah. He wrote a story about it. This is like around 96 when a band we know very well got back together and he was talking about how disappointed he was that the Kulik singer era is over. And I was like, finally somebody along. I think me and him were probably the only two that weren't happy about the reunion tour. Did I go? Yes. But it was the end of kiss. It was as far as trying to make yep. new music. They became a nostalgia act. Yeah. You can love the reunion tour. It was great. Yep. But he, he said it, he goes, yeah, seeing them with, the eighties and nineties, you kind of look at the originals and you didn't grow up in that era. You kind of take a step back and go, wow, they're not as good as Eric's, you know, in your opinion, you know, sure, sure. I was with him and I was like, yeah, I like this guy. And I think after that he became, my, cause I was like, finally, somebody agrees with me that, you know, of course I, like I said, I still went to the reunion shows. I, you know, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, like you, that, but it, Jericho. Yeah. yeah. Get, getting off the subject a little bit. It wasn't that, I was just excited to see him back in makeup and, yep. and the original four together. But honestly, one of my favorite, if close to my favorite, I, I'll always favor the originals, but close to my favorite was Kulik and Eric Carr. I oh, mean, when they can't. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. right now I would love to see off the soundboard with, with that, you know, hot yeah. shade tour. Waiting for that thing. It, you know, it, it, it won't happen. It won't happen. Uh, you know, the whole thing with the, how do you know that Steve? How do you know it won't happen? I'm just it, curious. It was a thing with, um, you know, oh, Eric, his family. Like, that's right. Yeah, that's you right. know, and, and and you can't really blame him because Paul Paul said some pretty messed up things. Over he the sure years. did. He, he just that that man that man's his own worst enemy. I swear. But um, <laughs> you know, as far as Chris goes, like I I I love him. And you'll later he, he's not on my list, but you'll see why later on because because 
the way I looked at it with him is there's two other wrestlers along with him that I kind of grouped together. And I picked one of the other ones as, as to put on my list, but I don't know when this man sleeps because he wrestles. <laughs> I don't either. A kick-ass band. I just saw Fozzie about two months ago um, over in Pennsylvania. They were unbelievable. He's an incredible showman. He's got his podcast that I think dropped three days, three times a week. I think his podcast wow. is Monday, three Monday, times. Wednesday, Friday. Um, wrestling, all the things he does. I mean, the man is my age, and he's just the hardest working guy out there. And um, I love him as a wrestler, just like just like you said, Steve. I loved him as a baby face, but as a heel, he just excelled. He was yeah. such a smart ass. You, you you love to hate him, but you but you laughed at him because you he, love to hear him talk. I, I, I that's, oh that God. was one of the things I watch for is just to hear some of the stuff he said. Yes, and he was great. Every bit as good with his one liners as The Rock was back in the day. That the whole era, I, yeah. I miss those times. That's when wrestling yeah. I thought was a ton of fun. It was just fun. You see to that. Watch. They could tell stories back yeah. then. They can't yeah. do that today. Yeah. You see that story, that f- thing that he got into it with the uh, MVP, and he says, I don't fight jobbers. <laughs> 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 right to I'm his not- face. Sorry, I don't fight jobbers. Yeah. When, well, when is Sebastian Bach going to show up at AEW as a, as a, as a going against Jericho? Oh, I, I, you know, I, for that. Oh, I saw that whole Twitter exchange, and he, and you people wonder why Rachel and Snake don't want him back in the band. There you exactly. go. Exactly. Oh. Calling out a guy who's supposedly your friend. You know, I mean, but I Jericho's Another a heel guy. again. He's a heel again in AEW. But that's a big reason I watch AEW is because I mean he he goes old school, and I know it rubs a lot of people along the wrong way, but. He's a heel, and you still got people singing Judas. I mean, it's I mean, oh, that's God. a great song, Wait. too. Yeah, Absolutely. I will tell you this. I it's think fair. it was when he was having that feud with what, uh, that MJF, what's his name? Yeah, in AW. And one of the stipulations of him co- having a match with that guy, the guy said, You can't play your interest, interest yeah, music when you that. come in. The f- crowd sang it, <laughs> so the crowd sang it the whole wow. time. And, and Jericho, you can just see Jericho's face. You know, he was just grinning from ear to ear. You could tell that really got to him. Yeah. But do you guys still do you guys follow AEW at all? I do a little bit. I so do you think it. the MJF is real legit, or you think it's a shoot a work? I don't know. Oh, that man. that's actually pretty interesting right now. Yeah. yeah. He's good, but man, I don't think WWE would use him right. I think he's gonna be a bigger star in AEW. Agreed. He, he could be he could be the big dog in AEW or small fish in WWE. Because exactly. WWE can't even get NXT right. You have these people that are kicking ass in NXT Dude, they and they go to the main roster. They, they suck. They've got Rick Steiner's son yeah. as the NXT champion, and they can't. They don't know how to use him. I mean, they could have a monster there, mm-hmm. but they don't know how to use him. Yeah, I saw him. Inter- him he inter- he ducked the, his, the brothers into it. it was, he's a big dude, man. Look, like he'd be he a is. star, but they just – I mean, it's too, screw him up. it's too overscripted, and they don't let the people be them. Exactly. That's why I like AEW a little bit more. They're older, but they're, they're more old got, they've got an old school feel. Love yeah, it. but they got more talent, younger talent that, you know, like who's that? Sammy Guaro and, yeah, yeah. 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 I think Sammy right. Guaro with Jericho is going to be a good deal. I saw that. Because the they're going to turn, one of them's going to turn on them soon. You know, they're going to be a good feud. Warren, was he on your list? You have, was Jericho on your list? Yes, he's my number four. He's number four. four. Cool. Yeah, so he's up there you know, for me. I, I really like Chris. I love Chris. I, I do. That's you know, how I, I discovered. That's how I discovered Shout Out Loudcast. Me too. I listened, yeah. to, I listened to Talk is Jericho. Then he had him on there. Me too. He'd always have podcasts, and I was like, oh, and that they became my uh, pretty much my favorite pod, Kiss podcast. I mean, that was were, the Kiss Alive versus Kiss Alive Two. Yeah, I think. probably. Yeah. yeah, and that that same thing. I heard that. I was like, these guys are Kiss yeah. fans. I love this. What's their podcast? And that that was yeah. that was it. That was it. Yeah, well, he has a lot of guys on there. I think he. He was on top. He was on three sides. He was on pot of you know. He was been on. He's been on a lot yeah. of them. Yeah, but he's he, he's he's say a regular word. guest on. Don't say on those words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just pointing out the obvious, sir. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm, kind of, I'm kind of I'm kind of rethinking my. You'll see when I get there. But um, okay. Hey, okay. Number eight for you. Number, Number eight. eight. Okay, so I, while I only had three cable channels, one of my <laughs> best friends back then, whose family had a little bit more money than my family had, had all the channels. And that's when I discovered the NWA because he had the station, I guess it was TBS back then, that that was on. So now all of a sudden I'm seeing all these other wrestlers that I'd never, that I'd only seen in magazines before. 
remember they used to record in that little like TV studio. There was like maybe maybe, maybe three rings of people around the ring. There was like nobody yeah. there or anything. Yeah. Talk that, about, you talk about NWA, right? Yeah, yeah. NWA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, with Gordon Soley and and and, um, and I, I was like, this is way better than WWF, and I loved it. One of the first guys I fell in love with was Arn Anderson. Oh, I just thought he was phen- the Four Horsemen. He was my favorite one at the time. I, of course, he was you know the tag team, but I just thought that that guy was such a technician. I loved his banter. I loved everything about him. I thought he's an amazing wrestler. And even now to hear him, I think I heard him on Chris's show not too long ago, to hear his old stories. I mean, it's just to hear about the the way these guys traveled together and, and you know, just the, the madness that went on back in the day. But um, I thought he was like, I thought he was like the best pure wrestler that, um, you know, Maybe not so entertaining and so and so um, you know provocative, but at a, a true wrestling standpoint, this guy I thought had it all together. He's got a podcast, and he's I, yeah, he's Orn, got a podcast. Yeah, he's got yeah. Orn. and I, it's pretty cool because he doesn't ask Arn anything. And man, he JJ Dillon used to have a podcast, and it was like that. But Arn goes really deep into the um, the stories. Yeah, okay. Arn didn't make my list, but I yeah, he's a horseman, so of course I I like him. Now. I will tell you this: Arn is on my list. Is Arn, he? Right? Arn is number three. Number wow. three. Okay. Wow. The the guy just is. You like, guys are NWA. You guys oh, are NWA. Such, I can tell. Such a great technician. You think about it as a tag team. You look at him and Tully, yeah. him and Ole, mm-hmm. him and Bobby Eaton, him mm-hmm. and Larry Zabisco. Yeah. I mean, the list, and he makes you know. The dream tag team was him and Bobby Eaton because they were the two best tag team wrestlers of all time, in my opinion. Uh, but it was a damn shame what happened between him and Tully. That, they, <clears throat> that yeah, they they kind of crossed the laws, but I think yeah. they're kind of. I don't think they're best friends or anything now, but I think they're they're on speaking terms. But yeah. you know, Tully. No, Tully I was talking had, about them breaking up the tag team. I was talking about like when Ole got busted or uh, Tully got busted, I guess for drugs or something like that. The WWE fired him. I believe. Well, no, what actually what happened was Arn and Tully were going back to WCW. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. And somebody, you know, because there were the deal was already made. This was when Jim Hurd, the pizza mm-hmm. man, was in charge of uh WCW. The deal was already made with <laughs> Tully and Arn coming back. You yeah. know, instead of <clears throat> instead of Sting being a horseman, it was gonna be Arn and Tully were going to come back, mm-hmm. and and then somebody from WWF Let it leak. leaked information to WCW that uh, Tully had failed a drug test. Drug test that's oh. right. <clears throat> so Jim Hurd reduced what they were going to pay Tully, and then punished Arn for it and reduced yeah. what he was going to pay Arn. Tully turned it down. Wow. Tully actually backstage. At the, uh, at the class of champions where they turned on Sting, and ended up. I was in, that was in Corpus, Corpus Christi, Christi. Test. Yes, yeah. I remember that. Okay, but you know he and Orn Orn had bad feelings for him ever since then. You know they were. That's when we got the Paul Roma era, right? Oh God, <laughs> that was one. You know, and he, he mm-hmm. they were World Tag Team Champions. That was another one that Orn was with, but. One of my favorite, Arn had so many great promos. And Arn is the one that came up with the Four Horsemen. Right. You know, he was talking about we're like the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. And Tony yep. Schwein said, after it was over, Tony Schwein said, you should do something with that name. But one of my favorite promos that Arn Anderson ever did, he started it off, he said, you know, Tony Schiavone, I'm not one to toot my own horn, but toot, toot. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. That's great. That's and great. He was, he's so great on the microphone. And yeah, yeah, if you haven't listened to his podcast, Joe, he does a great job on his podcast. I got him now. I got Mick Foley's now. I mean, I yeah. got I got podcast. I got podcast but, fever. Okay. It's a I, shame. Um, Art, you know, Art, I'm sorry. Arn, Arn actually, you know, Arn is actually one of the few guys that, that got a clean pen over Hulk Hogan. Um, I don't know if you remember that on Nitro, he pinned Hulk Hogan, and that was one. Of, he says that's one of his greatest moments. But then the few you guys remember the feud he had with Flair, yeah, that was weird. 
I was like freaking weirded wow. out with that. And luckily that didn't last long, but uh, I didn't yeah. like that angle. I didn't I didn't like those two being being at being at, at odds like yeah. that. Yeah, I didn't yeah. Like and, and and of course Flair does his usual thing, turns on Sting and the horseman, new version of the horseman. That was a Pillman. Uh yeah. but Pillman and Benoit. Yeah. But yeah, Orange, I, is, Orange is great all around. The spine buster, one of the prettiest spine busters. I, he did a spine buster after he retired. WrestleMania 18, I believe, Flair versus The Undertaker. And Flair and Orn comes out to the ring, and you don't see him. I mean, you don't see He comes out of nowhere, and all of a sudden, he does one of the best spine busters I've ever seen on Undertaker. Nice. And, yeah, so – Orn is, you see, Orn is definitely one of my favorites of all time. Cool. You see him and uh, you see his son, and you can definitely tell that's his son. The son's yeah. in AEW. Yeah, definitely. Arn Anderson, I my favorite, I guess, part there is when the kind of the um had to be the late 80s is when the horseman had Luger in it, and mm-hmm. Arn started the feud, was talking. Well, we all were victorious last night, except one of them. I think it's when Dusty beat him. That was uh, after Luger Stark in 87. Out. Yeah, the beat uh, Lu- uh, Dusty beat him. Luger for the U.S. title because they had mm-hmm. all the gold in, and I knew that was setting that up where they were yeah, going to spell tell, Luger. You could tell the way they were talking. I was like, "Well, Luger's but getting Arn, ready to man, go. just telling okay. that story." And I just remember oh, they're going to turn Luger's going to turn, or they're going to turn him babyface because Luger was too pretty to be a bad guy. <sighs> Luger was back then. Good. Yeah, awesome. Oh, all right, Warden number eight. Number eight. eight. This isn't so much the WWF run. This is probably his Mid-South run when I really became a fan. Of course, I like the WWF run. But this guy was on Dark Side of the, Dark Side of the Ring, mm-hmm. featured guest. But he teamed with a guy named Lord Humongous in Mid-South. Hmm. Jake the Snake. Oh, oh Robert. Okay. okay. And like I said, not so much his WWE run, but I liked his WWE run, mm-hmm. F run. I like that he came out with Alice Cooper at WrestleMania. That was pretty oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, that was. <laughs> I cool. like the. I love the fact that he put the snake on Andre. That was cool. Yeah, I like the when he did the Cobra with Savage. Yeah, I just Jake the Snake was just somebody that should have been champion, and the Ultimate War screwed him because I think that had something where they were going to put the title on Jake or something like that, and Vince said, "You have the worst look." I think I don't know if it was Hogan that they were going to do it to, and they went with the Warrior. Something happened. I Stevie probably knows, but Jake the Snake. When they say people that should have been world champion, Jake should have been, especially like when he was kind of good, bad, and like yeah. you know he's the one that turned the Undertaker uh, babyface because they yeah, were going after Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. And he just, he just, you believe him. I mean, you, you. He's kind of like totally Blanchard. You, you, when you look Jake the Snake Roberts, you're like, this guy, I don't trust him. Yeah. But I mean, the fans loved him. I mean, when he, I mean, he had that he good run in the 80s. Boy, they loved him. Yeah. But yeah. And I saw that too, that he was talking about how the wrestler was made about, you know, his story is kind of like the wrestler. He had a falling out with his family and all that stuff like that. But yeah, Jake the Snake, man. And then, like I said, not so much the NWA, but it's like when he had the red pants and, uh, Mid South, him and Lord Humongous. They were, I mean, that's another guy that kind of disappeared. Humongous, who was that guy anyway? I'm not, I don't uh, remember. He was a big was. dude. I mean, where did he, he go? Where did he disappear to? You remember, yeah. you remember when because he was he wasn't the original one, but I think Sid actually took over Lord. Oh, Humongous that's right, one time. That's, that's what it was, Sid. Yeah, I remember seeing that, that documentary. The name escapes me, but it was a documentary where they were like focusing on Jake and Mick Foley. Um, and it was so sad. Beyond the mat. Beyond was the mat. Yeah, beyond it was the beyond the mat. mat. Beyond the mat, and and to see Jake open up like that, strung out, man. I mean, he, he's just he's a mess, and he's going to that wrestling match where it's like it's in the high school somewhere with like fifty people, and he's drunk and he's falling over to chairs, and it's like wow, like this is this is like the mighty of fall. Like like you said, he was such an amazing talent, heel or babyface. The fans loved him, and that snake gimmick was just just. You know, yeah, that, that was the best, you know, and, and I'm so happy that he got kind of saved. You know, if that whole thing with, with, with DDP is true and he really came to his rescue and, and got him back in shape, you know, thank God for that. And that guy's got some stories, too. He's a pisser. I, I hear him on different podcasts here. And I've heard him on Jericho show a few times. Yeah. That guy can tell some stories. He's, 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 some shit. he's the kind of guy that you watch and you make and it makes you think it's real. Yeah. yeah. 
Because yeah. he's, yeah. I mean, it's it's like him and Flair. They're like they're 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 storytellers. Yes, they yeah. live the life. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it's like he did. He he didn't like snakes, evidently, according to he didn't like snakes, but they made him carry a snake. Yeah, yeah well, Jake's a snake man. I just man, I was awesome. I'll tell, this, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this, Joe. Add another podcast to your list because Jake and DDP have a podcast. Oh, they do. Yeah, Jake and DDP have one. Okay. Uh, right. I too. just remember, you know, I I didn't know him in the mid south days. I remember the first my first memory of him was when he DDT'd Ricky Steamboat on the floor. Oh, for the match and put you know Steamboat was unconscious. K yeah. Fabe, uh, but. I don't know if you you guys have heard this story. You know, after Piper retired, Piper. Well, this was before Piper retired. You know, they did the whole Piper's Pit thing, and I think Piper was on hiatus or something like, or he was supposed to be hurt or something. Jake did a little thing called a Snake Pit. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And there is there's no known footage of it <clears throat> because <clears throat> there was going to be a program between Jake and Hulk. Okay. And he had Hulk out there on the snake pit. And he ended up, you know, DDT and Hulk Hogan. And the crowd went wild. Wow. The crowd was cheering. Wow. And of course, that that may be what you're talking about because yeah. Vince just went just done. No we no can't way. have we can't have anybody cheering for anybody other than Hulk, you know, wow. especially a heel cheering for jake over hulk and, yeah they were uh, gonna make they were gonna make jake the champion and he lost out a lot of money because he didn't get that program with hulk they put the warrior in there instead and i think yeah, mcmahon so, told I him mean, you have the worst luck in the world jake jake had his demons of course just like yeah. you said yeah. but jake should have been at least with that run he had wwe yeah he should have been at least an intercontinental champion something give him something yeah i mean there's i mean just like Gosh, who there was there were so many of them. You know, they finally gave they finally gave Piper a small run with the Intercontinental Belt yeah. right there near the end. But yeah, Jake Jake deserved. Well, gave, I mean, he never gave, got he never even got a World Tag Team run. He you right. know you could have given something. Speaking of the end, didn't they put the World Tag Team titles on him and Flair Piper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was and, that know, was during the whole uh, Spirit Squad, the, the cheerleader, the male cheerleaders. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. That's but you know what? The only, the only, <clears throat> the only thing I got out of the Spirit Squad was the few with DX when DX used to. I mean, and <clears throat> you got your World Tag Team Champions, and DX is fighting all four or five of them and pummeling them. I mean, so you just made your World Tag Team Champions look terrible. Right, right. So Jake did not make my list. Mine either. Uh, so that's my first three are not in any of y'all's list. Yeah, he had the best for the best mullet going ever, though. He had he's he had the mullet. Yes. He had I remember, hey, you remember his wife that was on there with the whole Rick Rude thing, Cheryl? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She was yeah, smoking. Yeah. She, oh, was yeah. smoking. Yeah. she was. Good yes. for him. So my number eight is the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour. Wine to dine with kings and queens, and ate franks and beans. I'm talking about the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. Dusty Rhodes. All right. You look at this guy, and I remember the first time I saw him out there talking, and he's talking so loud, screaming so loud, that whenever he takes a breath, he sounds like, <gasps> just like he's out of breath. But then you see that, and I'm like, this guy can't have any athletic ability at all, just looking at him. Right. That right. Joker could flat out wrestle, though, and he, he had the charisma – Charisma, he had it all, and he he could, you know, it didn't hurt. It didn't hurt that he could book himself in all the main events right, too. Right, right. But you know, just like we talked earlier, he had the big, the big few with the Horsemen. That was, you know, him and Flair always mm. went back and forth. Always, yeah. I mean, you could say what you just like. Well, what I didn't understand, and I, I at the time, I understand it better now. That whole Great American Bash of '86, <clears throat> where Flair fought somebody pretty much different every night and dusty and there was some of them that got multiple shots <clears throat> but flair was in the middle of this big program with ricky morton and of course they're not going to put the belt on morton at the time because he's they say he's too small but 
I always thought it was funny how Flair, you know, Dusty was in the, in the middle of that big feud with Tully, and he had the big feud with Big Bubba, you know, over over what the Midnight Express did to Baby Doll, and all of a sudden he comes out with the the World Heavyweight Championship, and they always only kept it on him for like two weeks. I mean, yeah. that was like it was like, all right, we're gonna put it on for two weeks. That's it. <laughs> but you know. Dusty, Dusty had some great lines. It, it just like Orn, his interviews are classic. The, classic. The, the hard times interview w- was great, but the only problem I have with Dusty, the older I get, the more and the more I realize he, him being in that big position. You know, he put it, and and there, you hear a lot of wrestlers talk about it. Whenever there was a another like the Rock and Roll Express, when they started really getting the rise. Who starts teaming up with the Rock and Roll Express? Dusty Rhodes. Comes out there with bandanas on his leg. Road Warriors come in. They get hot. Yeah. Who goes out there and starts teaming up with the Road Warriors? Painting yep. his face. Dusty yep. Rhodes. Yeah. So, I yep. mean, I can see Tully was one of them that really talked about how Dusty really abused his power. But I can see it. I can say see what it. you want to, but the guy could put on a show. The the bionic elbow when he did the, the chorus line, you know, when it, it, he – there was, I think, the Crockett Cup when him and Nikita fought uh, Tully and Lex, and they were, he just had uh, JJ and Lex and Tully lined up, but just kept giving them elbows. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah. He totally got did wrong when he went to WWF with the polka dots. But I couldn't stand that. Right. Yeah, I, he I, made. I, you know what though? That guy made the best of it. That guy made the best of it. He did. He did. He was the guy, like one of my this this friend of mine that had that station at his house on cable. That was his favorite wrestler was Dusty. And prior to getting that station, though, it was just Dusty in magazines. And he was always good to be a bleeder because that blonde hair, oh, yeah. was there, always a bleeder. You know, it was great. His his head just got those scars yes. all over it. You know, it was just just nasty. Loved his interviews, like you said. Couldn't stand his WWE run. That polka dot thing was just, I thought, wow, that was that's just embarrassing, you know. And and just recently, just at um was it hell in the cell? When 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 um Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins came out, yeah, with, the, with, out the with polka, polka dots against, against uh against Cody. It was against Cody with his 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 I guess tribute to to Dusty or whatever, you know. Yeah, but, you, so. you know, it, it, they made it look like and it probably was in, in a way trying to get to Cody, but Seth Rollins was Dusty Rhodes was one of he was Seth Rollins' t- trainer. He was his teacher. Yeah. He taught Seth a lot, so yeah. it kind of was a tribute. And but they made it look like he was poking fun at exactly at Dusty. Exactly, but um, I'm with you. He wasn't on my list, but um. I, I loved watching him wrestle, especially, you know, like any of those strap matches or cage matches or anything. Dusty, you can count on Dusty to be a bleeder. That was for sure. Oh, yeah. Always. Yeah. Him and Flair, if they got wrestling each other, they were go- there was going to be gonna blood be everywhere. going to be blood, yeah. I wasn't a big Dusty Rhodes fan growing up. He was a good guy. I was a, I was a horseman, even though he's yeah, from know, Austin, yeah. Texas. Yeah. And I, uh, and I have a couple of my Aggie buddies – Sent something on there, him on an A and M shirt, so I like him even less. <laughs> so now Dusty was good. I mean, I think what the WWF did to him was criminal. Yeah, it was yeah. a pretty catchy theme song though. But I think I, man. I loved Gold Dust when Gold Dust with his heights. Him and Booker T were hilarious. Yeah, I oh, think. Yeah, I I I'm glad Cody's back. I think Cody's awesome. I like Cody a lot too. And I just, you know, it's just, it's, it, you hear Flair talk about him. You hear all the wrestlers talk about him. He died a, a few years ago and what, in 2015. And you just heard people just, I mean, the poor and outcome. I mean, he, yeah. Yeah. He had his faults. We all do, but man, yep. more good than bad. Yeah. But he made, you know, those guys that, that are talking about him too, he made them guys a lot of money because sure yeah. Crockett was white hot back during that time when 86 was yeah. white hot. Absolutely. Absolutely. Number seven. Seven for Joe. Number yep. seven. Okay. So this guy, so my favorite time in the WWE was definitely that whole attitude era. I, I loved that era. Probably my favorite time of, of, of wrestling. And I think this guy was was, I think it was him that really ushered it in 
and really define that era for what it was. And that's that's the rattlesnake, Steve Austin. <laughs> Steve Austin. Not not the best wrestler in the world, but man, that guy could cut a promo. That guy could do a storyline, and he always entertained. You know, I remember seeing him before he was the rattlesnake, before before all that stuff. You know, doing B card matches in Scranton, Pennsylvania, to a thousand people. You know, and just just here he was, and then all of a sudden, he just became you know what he is, and and the guy wrestled hurt. The, the dude just his his uh, feuds with so many wrestlers, but I loved his feud with, with Vince. That was just always very comical, you know, and just the middle finger stone cold said, so the beers, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that for me during that, that era of, of the WWE. So he's my number, uh, number seven. Well, I'm officially done with you guys. Oh man. Because he is my number one. Oh, all right. All and right. I don't, and, and you would have asked me a couple years ago, somebody else on my list would have been it. Yeah, I know. Who and we'll talk is. about that later. Mm-hmm. But after just kind of watching his little match that he had with Ke- Kevin Owens over WrestleMania, I had so much fun. I forgot how much I enjoyed Austin, and I and it, it's weird. It took that him being gone for all those years yeah. to see him again, and he wasn't what he was. But perfect opponent, Kevin Owens. They 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 rocked the place. Yeah. yeah. And ben, Vince couldn't sell a stunner to save his life, but he's 70 freaking five. Good gosh. <laughs> but I think it took that just that when that glass breaks. Yeah. I think yes. that, and it's funny, he wasn't probably my favorite wrestler at the time mm-hmm. of the Attitude Era. Mm-hmm. But looking back, I think he's my favorite overall. He's got deep roots down here in Texas, of course. Yep. Yep. He's got a great haircut. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, the guy loves dogs. He had a great podcast that he doesn't do anymore. He was one yeah. of the first ones, kind of like Jericho. Yep. I just, I just watched him at WrestleMania in Dallas. I mean, it was just like, I was just so happy to see a Texan actually win in that stadium. That you know, that's a story. <laughs> that's, Austin, that's Austin, sure. Austin, that's Austin sure. is just yeah, he's my all time favorite. He's he's all number right. one for me, awesome. and I think it took the Kevin the Kevin Owens match to do it. Nice. Because I just, I just, it brought back so many memories. And there's yeah. on his documentary that after he retired, he talks about it and stuff. And he, and at the end of the song, they play that George Strait song, I'll be somewhere down in Texas, which is a lie because he now lives in Arizona or wherever, yeah. in California. <laughs> but that, that song, I'll be somewhere down in Texas. I mean, it was like, yeah, Austin and I, and he, and he, when he was fighting Shawn Michaels, he, there for a while, he lived here in a little town called Bernie, which is about, 30 minutes away i'd see him and i saw him at the gym no kidding and i was and i was there and i see this guy on a cell phone and he's got the he's got you see the texas emblem on his the tattoo yeah and so i'm in there doing cardio and i walk out and he's like just lifted weights and he looks up at me with that stare i'm like please sir don't kick my ass you know (laughs) (laughs) but he was there this is when he was still with deborah and i'd see him walking out together and stuff and there was this kid that he was a special needs kid Mm -hmm. And he was always talking stuff. He goes, Jason, I saw Steve Austin at the gym. And I, I've heard a story about him. He's a real, you know, jerk and all this yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. But he said that Austin was so cool with him and took wow. the time. And you see him in interviews and like on the podcast, he seemed like a good guy. You got to have a, you know, I, I know why the WWE brought him back to interview. I mean, my least favorite wrestler of all time is probably Jeff Jarrett. And yeah. I watched some of that interview that he did with Jeff Jarrett and they didn't like each other back in the day. Right. No, he did not. And it was like he made Jeff Jarrett seem interesting. He's like the Howard Stern of wrestling. Yeah. Was, that on, was that on his broke that show on uh it's on, on the I think that's Peacock? He interviewed with Jeff Jarrett because Jeff Jarrett's working for the WWE now. Okay. And I, I was never a Jarrett fan. I I he was probably my least favorite wrestler of all time. Yeah, but it was interesting. The, the, what Steve show called on Peacock broken broken something broken, or, skull, skull, broken, skull. broken skull. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I really I just watched an interview with Undertaker. It was two hours, yeah. and I sat there just mesmerized. Was like, yeah, he's doing shots of Jack. I'm like, this is great. You know, it was, <laughs> it was a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, it was good. He is my number five. Nice. Oh, wow. We're I finally, remember. There's finally one that that I have on y'all's list. Y'all got yeah. I remember. I actually first time I saw him in person, and this was way, way before Stun and Steve. No, Stone Cold. This was Stun and Steve in WCW. And Coliseum has a ponytail. Yeah. 
And I was like, and I remember reading about him from World Class because he had a big feud with Chris Adams. Dangerous Alliance was that? Was that around he, that era? He was no. This was right when he first came in. He he was there no time, and he took the TV build off Bobby Eaton. And I was like, something's you know, they were they're going to push this guy. Then of course WCW screws it up yeah. again. Fighting by FedEx. You speak of the Dangerous Alliance. Yeah. Now let me tell you Probably something. Dangerously, yeah. You look at that freaking stable and put them up against any kind, any other stable in there. I mean, you had Rick Rude, you had Steve Austin, Bobby Eaton, mm-hmm. Arn Anderson, and Larry Cisco, and then Wonder Medusa. Race. Yeah. And Paul Heyman. They, if they'd have last, if they'd have stayed together longer, that would have been, they'd have been right up there with the horsemen. Absolutely. Uh, but but Austin, it's another thing WCW screwed up. Another yeah. thing they screwed up with Austin. Yeah, they put it. They put him with Brian Pillman, and made one of the best tag teams in WCW that stayed together no time. The Hollywood Blondes. Yeah, I mean they had the gimmick going when they came to the ring doing the the camera. They Mm -hmm. worked well together, and then all of a sudden you just break them up. And I'm like, my gosh! But that angle they had in WWE where Austin was breaking into his house, house. Pillman had the gun. That was great. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, did y'all did you see Pillman's wife she passed away? Yeah, no, yeah, because have y'all seen Brian Pillman Jr.? He looks just picture? like his daddy with the same yeah. haircut and everything. Oh man, he looks just like, but yes, yeah, so also, I still have I still have my Austin 316 shirt, oh. uh, but this one is Stone Cold University on the front and it's got Austin 316 on the back, yeah. yeah. I still have that in the closet in there. I should have I thought about wearing that tonight, but I don't have Warden's haircut to pull it off. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he's my number five. Nice. Right. So number you're number seven, Warden. Seven. My number seven? Mm-hmm. No, no, it's Joe's number seven. Oh, yeah, that's right. He just did awesome. Okay, yep. my number seven. We talked about him already. Mm-hmm. He has a thing for coconuts. Oh. Snuka. Mm-hmm. Roddy, Rowdy, Roddy Piper. Okay. You got him on when that. When the wrestling album came out and he did that song for everybody, I love everybody. that song. He was the best heel at the time. He, yeah. When he took that album and broke it over, broke over Captain Lou Albano's head. Manager. Like, yeah. Like, no, I yeah, mean, it was Lou Albano. Yeah. yeah. Piper, and I didn't really know. I mean, I was really, I got into the WWE because of that uh, F. Because I, I I moved on from world class and NWA really wasn't quite there. WWA was always like, well, that's the big time. That's they're so big they don't recognize anybody else. I mean, and I thought Piper, I didn't, you know, I didn't know he was in Mid Atlantic or he was in NWA. Yeah, but oh my god, he was such a great heel. I mean, it's some of the stuff he said. It's just, it's just he couldn't get away with it now. I mean, I know. It, it, he was he was great. Yeah. The line, the line, uh, he's always going to be remembered for. Of course. It, Great movie. It was in the movie. I came here to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubblegum. <laughs> he had Brian, a- Brian from Playlist Wars, you don't have to boycott the show. Warden saved us. So there we go. There we go. So he's not on y'all's list? No, no, he's not on my list. Not on my list either. Wow. No. No. Wow. I, wow. I'm. I'm a little surprised that Dusty Rose was so low on Stevie's because you talk about a top NWA guy. That's that's you'll a little. Why, you'll see why. I that's know. a no. That's a little. That's a little. You know, I, you the things so. that and and I mentioned what I talked about with Dusty that the booking part. Yeah. That lowered lowered me. Yeah. To hit to me, that made him lower on my list than anything. I got you. So, you know, crazy about what that that was also. Behind the curtain when you're a kid, you don't know these things. You don't know about that stuff. You have no idea who's booking what, who these guys are. Like, you know, when I found that out later on, I'm like, he was the booker? Like, this guy's, this guy with all the the scars on his forehead and bleeding everywhere. Is he's a. But it ended up, it ended up backfiring on him. The thing that got him sent away when, because he didn't go straight from WCW to WWF. He went, he had to go to Florida. For a little while, it started like a little promotion down there. The thing that got him was that Saturday morning show 
when they tried to turn the Road Warriors heel and everybody was still cheering for them, mm-hmm. but they said, and Dusty said, well, let's do this. Take one of the spikes off your shoulder pad and jam it in my eye on Saturday morning with all these kids watching, and we'll get blood out of that. And the people at TBS went cuckoo. And you notice after that, I think Starcade 88, when he teamed up with Sting against the Road Warriors, that was pretty much the last time you saw Dusty until he went to WWF. Because they were, they were, they done told him, you know, you're gone. Yeah. Wow. And we need to get to your number seven, man. We're going to be having a Dusty Rose podcast. We've already talked about my number seven. Uh, Randy Savage, the Macho Man. Randy Savage. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So we'll move right down to uh, Joe's number six. Number six. This I kind of cheated on this one a little bit, only because I, I could I couldn't I couldn't split these guys up, and we just talked about them, so I couldn't pick one over the other. But this is the only time I did this. I had to pick the Road Warriors because I I can't see them as being ever single, you know. I but I think I think they were they were part of that that time where. Again, big guys, but the mobility that they had, the things that they could do, you know, they were probably the biggest guys in wrestling at that time, size-wise. And what an amazing tag team. If I had to pick one, though, I probably would take Animal over oh, over Hawk, you know. Um, and, uh, again, they were they, – you, you couldn't make those guys heels. They were they – were, they were, the fans loved them, whether they were good guys or bad guys. Again – so many of these guys that went from, you know, WCW to WWE, WWF, where I didn't think it worked. I didn't like them when they went to the WWE, you know, um, yeah. you just can't get that. You can't, that, that whole thing with lightning striking twice, you know, it just, it just didn't happen. Um, you can't recreate those feuds that they had with Dusty and Sting and those guys back then. You just, just didn't work over there. But again, those, those guys, I thought like for their size, the things that they could do, they were just incredible. Yeah, Animal was my favorite too. I, yeah, I, mean, I like talk too, but I always thought Animal would kind of be a better singles wrestler. Yeah, yeah. He just, I mean, he wasn't. Hulk was just so. Hawk was just so big. Animal had like the. He was like Taz. He was a Tasmanian devil. If you guys. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but Road Warriors were badass. So absolutely, absolutely. They should. If it truth be known, everybody always said, "Well, if wrestling wasn't fake." The Road Warriors should never lose, and that yeah, which that's the truth. They had some great feuds with the Midnight Express. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, that was that's a scaffold match at Starcade eighty six. Oh, oh. I remember just hearing about that. You know, with the build up to that, I mean, gosh, it was so great when they did the little uh, vignette when they were out there on the scaffold, throwing pumpkins off the off the thing, and say it, and have beautiful Bobby and Loverboard Dennis wrote on the pumpkins. So yeah. Great. But the Road Warriors. Road Warriors. All right. So, Warden, your number six we've already, we done, already talked right? about. Yep. Savage. Savage. So, yep. my number six, this is a guy that, to my knowledge, I don't think he ever even come close to being a heel. He's always babyface. Mm. Uh, one of the few that you can that can actually say that. I don't know how many you can think. I think Magnum, and who knows, Magnum's career got shorted. Uh but probably one of the greatest technical wrestlers you ever see and had the sweetest looking arm drag you'll ever see. I'm talking about Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Oh, all right. Uh, I just remember, you know, like I said, we I've heard heard about Steamboat. My dad used to watch Mid Atlantic back in the day, and I was this was probably in the early, early eighties, and I I didn't really I was like, it's wrestling. I I didn't, I didn't watch it with him, but I do remember seeing steamboat out there mm-hmm. and uh you know when i started really watching it and steamboat was having a few with jake then he did the thing with the, one of the greatest matches of all time at wrestlemania 3 with randy savage and uh but then that freaking woman bonnie steamboat ruins everything wants him to take time off when he's a freaking intercontinental champion he's worked so hard to do it and Vince gets ticked with him, takes the belt off of him, puts it on the honky tonk man. Yeah, yeah. We won't even go there, but I'm cool. I'm cocky. I'm bad. But, but then, I think the biggest thing I with Steamboat for me was the trilogy, and I'm not talking about the matches in the '70s were great, but the trilogy he did with Flair in the late '80s, Chi Town Rumble, uh, the Clash of the Champions, two out of three falls. 
And then the, uh, uh, I think it was Wrestle War, was it 89? When Flair, it, Flair got the belt back from him and then Flair gets beat up by Terry Funk. But those three matches right there, I'll put those three matches up against any match, right? Especially the Clash of Champions match, the two out of three fouls. That was so. I mean, that had you had me on the edge of my seat. I can go back and watch that now, and I know who's going to win it. And I'm still like, what the heck is going to happen? That's, but Steamboat just, you know, never went heel. Always a baby face. Yeah. But, and then came back after years of being retired when Jericho did the whole angle with the legends. And Steamboat came back at a pay per view and wrestled Jericho that, and yeah. still could go. I mean, if it wasn't for his, he had a lot of problems with his feet that caused him to retire. Right. Um, but yeah, Steamboat is my number six. Nice, nice. To kind of echo on what what Warden said, my my most hated wrestler, probably the honky tonk man. I could not understand the gimmick of that guy, and I mean, and I don't know you guys. He had good him. heat. He had good heat. He was annoying as hell though. He had he, good heat though. He, who, was he ever anybody else before the honky talk man? I don't it remember. Was called, it was just called Wayne Ferris. He was okay. This okay. was back in mid south. He had blonde hair. No, mid, oh, mid okay. it was in Memphis, mid southern. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Let me tell you this though. You want to see something really weird? Yeah. Look up on YouTube mm -hmm. when he first came to WWF. He was a babyface. Look that up. A honky talk man interview is babyface. I don't remember that. Yes, he he started out as a baby face in WWE. Okay, but yeah, yeah Randy wow. Ricky Steamboat never was really one of my favorites, and I think it's because of what you mentioned because he was never a heel. I yeah, mean, you. I mean, I didn't dislike the guy, but he was just I don't know. Eighties baby faces just were too, too baby vanilla baby. for me. You're you know? too baby face. You I know? like you know. Of course, we know Austin was a baby face, but he was. a freaking cussing baby face you know exactly exactly well i think during that attitude era there really wasn't i mean there there were guys who were good guys bad guys but they wrestled each other like you know back in the day you didn't see a baby face fight a baby face or a heel fight a heel they then they just mixed it up like when you see the rock versus austin who's the baby yeah. face you know it's it's who's the heel number five number, number five. five to me okay this is where you're getting, I, getting now I'm getting the nitty got, did either neither one of y'all had steamboat right no no steamboat no okay this is where i had a three-way tie between oh. jericho being being one of them chris benoit being the other but oh, wow. i went i went with the third i went with Shawn michaels i went Shawn michaels for all the reasons you guys could probably you know i mean can you get a can you get a better guy on the mic to aggravate people? Can you get a better guy in the <laughs> ring? In the ring, the guy can do anything in the ring. He's just he's just like the epitome of an athlete. Um, so many good angles you can work with that guy, and you put him in the ring, and he makes everyone look good. You know, um, I just thought he was. I loved to hate Shawn Michaels because he he definitely brought that out. Like, you, you you couldn't stand him. You know, you could not stand him, and and I thought he just was was the epitome of a, of of a heel at that time. Again, the whole attitude era. Um, I loved him with uh with you know with with uh, Triple H and the the whole DX thing was just like classic classic WWE. That was like that that was the closest thing I saw to the Horseman. You know, in the in the newer era, that whole that whole thing. So I, I struggled here because right here, like I, I kind of put him, Benoit, and Jericho kind of in that same category. They're all great wrestlers. They were all great. You know, um, on the mic with their characters, but I went with I went with Sean. Sean is my number two. Nice. Sean another, is Sean is my number four. Another okay. another Texan. Yeah. Uh, we actually had a couple guests on uh, a couple weeks ago when uh, Brad and Barry Kling they were um, in a paranormal group I belonged in back in the day. Mm -hmm. and their brother actually went to older brother actually went to school with Sean and we kind of talked about it and stuff. And now you never thought that somebody that small would become such a big star. And I remember him telling me, I was talking to Brad one time ago, you know, it's pretty damn cool when there's an action figure made out of you. I mean, you, you know, you made it. You're not really a yeah. rock star. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that's pretty cool. HBK. I remember him wrestling in world-class and yeah. I, remember, I think That's it was killer, Bro killer brooks he was it was a killer brooks maybe was his one or something like that but i remember him wrestling here in san antonio i mean 
kid with a dream. And then when he came to the rockers and stuff and yeah. I mean, maybe behind Hogan NWO, the, the barbershop when he turns on Janetti has got to be one of the greatest. Oh, heel that's, turns. Great. that's great. Oh and God. the, and the classic line, I mean, Janetti tried to escape. <laughs> Janetti, like, a coward. He tried to dive through that glass window to get away. Oh, I knew. Him. Oh, I knew he was going to do that. Oh, I knew he was. Yeah, they stop. need him because Heenan was on that. You don't need, need each other. They're not going to break up. They need each other. And then when he kicked him, I right. knew he was going to do that. They don't. Yeah. He don't need Janetti. That was actually that was actually here in San Antonio. That was, was on. Hilarious. That was here I in San Antonio. You. He turned heel in San Antonio. I I and, tell you what, I love listening to Bobby the Brain Heenan. Oh, oh, oh he's some of the lives he comes up with. It's coming. Gorilla Monsoon. Yes, yes. Talking about Shawn Michaels, I remember for that Royal Rumble that he won against Vicious. That was here in San Antonio. Yeah. And it, yeah, I think it came close. I don't know if it beat the Cowboys record, Cowboys Oilers record. Okay. okay. For a preseason game here. Wow. But wow. they were trying to get, I don't know if it did or not. But that was the same match that uh, Austin kind of started. You can kind of see Austin because he, yeah. He was in the rumble when he got eliminated and he came back and eliminated Bret Hart. Yeah. You know? Nobody saw him. Yeah, but you talk about you talk about one of my favorite wrestling moments, seeing local kids, Shawn Michaels. I mean, they couldn't write a better script. I mean, he yeah. was yeah. Michaels was, Michaels was how do you put it? You could see that he had a lot of talent when he was with the Rockers. Yeah. yeah. And he, you know, when he went out of his own, I, I was like, you know. Okay, whatever. But he surprised me that it, you know, because a lot of he was one of those rare ones that a small guy that was making it, mm -hmm. and I, I he got you know when he got the belts off Bret Hart and the whole the whole big feud with Bret Hart and the whole Montreal screw job. Yeah. But yeah, when he did the DX stuff, that was oh my! I'm a mega DX fan. That, oh, me too. That, me too. And. When he came back with DX, you know, he, he had been saved and he kind of toned it down a little bit, but they were still mm -hmm. hilarious. They it still did hilarious. some great stuff. Little People's Court, that was <laughs> that was hilarious with Hornswoggle. The, fun, was... the funny thing, though, when when he did the, the night, was it the night after the Montreal screw job when he said he came to the ring with a belt and, of course, they're booing him. And he yeah. said, "Well, we're we've got a special guest for you guys tonight. We're gonna we're gonna apologize to him right now." And he said, "It's Brett, the Hitman Heart." And you know, things are kind of touchy at the time too. You know, you yeah. know what it is. And they bring a little short, little one of the uh, how do you say it politically correct? A small person <laughs> out there dressed like <laughs> Brett Hart. Hart. Doing yeah. the whole deal like that and bring him to the ring, and I was oh, like, "Oh I, my gosh!" It was yeah. unbelievable, unbelievable. <laughs> but it was cool to see him and then Brett kind of make it up. Yeah, yeah. even though yeah. Brett was totally wrong on that because he wasn't doing what was right for the business, in my opinion. So Brett screwed. I agree. Brett. I agree I too. Agree. I agree too. You know that whole thing. You know, there's that the whole controversy. Was that an angle? Was that for real? I mean. It looked pretty real to me. I mean, that, that whole thing. And then you know, to hear about Brett, you know, knocking Vince out backstage, when you see Vince walking down the hallway looking like he's been, you know, just literally hot. shattered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, but he was yeah. going to take the title to WCW. No, that's – You can't that's, have that happen. No, have that. especially yeah. back in those days with kayfabe. Yeah, Brett, you know, yeah. The thing Brett needed to do was think about when his dad was running uh, Stampede. Yeah. Would, would Stu let – the champion walk out of there, go to another company with the stampede belt on. No, not a chance. And I don't not know if he's on any of y'all's lists, but Brett's not the greatest there is, greatest there was. I, he I, was I, a I good wrestler. You, Brett, Brett is, how do I put it? Brett was a great technical wrestler, mm -hmm. but as far as best there ever was, best there ever will be, no, 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 no. Brett is is bitter. Bitter, bitter as there were, ever is. Best bitter guy right now. Yeah. Uh, number, which one are we on? Five? Number now? five for you. Yep. Me? Um, is another DX member. He was probably my favorite wrestler during the Attitude Era. And it's not my number one. It's uh, Triple H. Ah. I. 
like Triple H with I liked him when he was with China. I thought they were really cool. Love China. I yeah. loved him in DX. Yeah. I loved it when he turned on DX and said, I can't carry y'all anymore. I loved it when he turned on Sean when when Sean was back and stuff. I I love that that gimmick when they're doing the hot dogs and he's telling Sean, "Hey, Mr. Fuji's over yeah, there, Mr. Fuji, Mr. Fuji," and he goes running off. And Triple and Triple H is still, yeah. Triple H he, he had the he had the best like you know is this thing on you know give me that Triple H and Mr. I mean that was a great intro yeah, him great in China, song. yeah, high time. But I remember I went to a Cowboys game one time, and this is in the 90s, and I actually found a Triple H shirt. And I remember everybody was asking me on the bus, hey, where'd you get that? Because yeah, you yeah. couldn't really, there for a while, you couldn't get heel shirts until they realized they could make money off it. Right, you know? right, right. And I got, I got it in some store. I don't know if it was a bootleg or what, but yeah, Triple H, yeah. And I hated seeing him retire. Mm -hmm. I, 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 when I talk about Triple H, I think they did Sting wrong. I think Sting should have yeah. beat Triple H. I think I Triple too. H is almost kind of like Dusty in the fact that he puts himself over. I think he did great with Seth Rollins. I think he did great with Daniel Bryant, mm -hmm. losing to those. But I think they really messed up with Sting. It was great seeing the NWO. You know why that was? You knew that wasn't going to happen. That was, that was, that was yeah, but that the, that was the, wrong. The, Sting Mr. WCW better. is not going to beat Triple nobody, H at WrestleMania. Nobody, nobody okay. cares, but Vince. You know, exactly. Just, exactly. But that was he. he and, but when he had Motorhead open up, I mean, that was awesome. Yeah, man. that was. But we awesome. had this talk before, or, or actually, what what podcast was it? I was listening to. It was Foley's. Mm -hmm. They were talking about how Vince treated guys that came over from WCW. Yeah, and and then they brought up the whole when when Crockett bought out the UWF and. They pretty much buried all the UWF guys, and the only ones that made it through there was, I think, Doctor Death, the Steiners, Sting. and Sting. But there, the thing is, is like Foley said, we we're all working for the same company. Yeah. Right? And the only time they didn't bury somebody coming over from another promotion was with the NWO, and you look how successful that was. Yeah. So I mean, learn from that. But yeah, Sting should have beat Triple H at WrestleMania, but we knew that wasn't going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. You're number five, sir. I'm, well, we'll go back to that one for like, so Oh, sorry. He was my number three. Triple H is my number oh. three. He's my okay. number. Three. All right, good taste, uh, brother. Love, like same thing. He, uh, DX, like I said earlier, uh, to me, DX was was the four horsemen, you know, in, in the yeah. newer thing, and um, I I think it was the same card in Scranton, PA, where I saw Stone Cold before he was truly Stone Cold. Was this is when he was still Hunter Hearst Helmsley, you know, with the with the there are a little pirouette thing he used to do and stuff like a little that. Curtsy, a little curtsy, and and uh, I remember seeing China with him. And this is this is pre, this is China Raw before she had any surgery done. Yeah. She was just China, you know. And, and um, I, as a matter of fact, I, I'm pretty sure it was Hunter and Stone Cold in a tag team verse like Coco Beware and some other like Coco Beware, uh, some other like really like that that level thing, you know. And it was um. It was comical to watch, but I remember remember watching Hunter thinking, because at that point in time, I thought this 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 guy, the angle is just not good. He wasn't as shredded yet. He wasn't the yeah. attitude yet, you know. Um, but then later on, the whole him and him and China thing, I thought that was phenomenal. I, I that that era, yeah. man, I wish I could go back and watch all those matches all over again because there's so many great Twitch moments I've probably forgotten about, you know. And yeah, I I thought phenomenal. He um I was I had, I had raw tickets one time and I was like third row behind. And he had this girl that he used to come down with the girls. This is when he was still the Hunter Hearst Hemsley. Yeah. And he had one of the girls that came with, I went to high school with her. She was a model. Wow. So I was like, I was looking, I was like, Oh crap. That, that is her. Wow. And, and stuff like that. And it's like, man, that, that was pretty cool. But I remember yeah. him and Sean were like, just talking in the ring. I go, guys, make it look real. You know, you guys yeah. are fighting each other. Make it look real. Right. 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 I mean, the click did a lot of good. <clears throat> <laughs> for him to come he did not make my list I mean, but for him to come back from some of the stuff that Vince did to him yeah, uh, buried him at Wrestlemania against the Ultimate Warrior um, then punished him for the whole click send off at Nobody Madison else. Square Garden he couldn't punish Michaels he couldn't punish Nash and Hall because they were leaving So yep. he because Triple H was supposed to win King of the Ring I think that year 
Yeah. And he takes that away, that big push away from him. But yeah. Triple H didn't, you know, didn't complain or anything. He yeah. just did his job and it got him where he was. So yeah. he's Absolutely. he's he might be, who knows, he may be in charge of the company soon. Yeah. So let's see. Number five. My number five we've already talked about with Steve Austin. Okay. So number four for Joe. Okay. My four is Undertaker, who we, who we talked about. Okay, already. we talked about Undertaker. Okay. Yeah. And we've already talked about Jericho. You're number three, right, Warden? Four. Jericho four. is my number yeah, we've four. We've already talked about Jericho. We already talked about Shawn Michaels. Okay. And then we talked about Triple H was Joe's number my number three. three. Yeah. So who was your number three, Warden? My number three was probably my number one a few years ago. Oh, the nature. Boy. But I think he's oh, overstayed his welcome too much. He's uh, making another comeback, which could kill him. But <laughs> I listen. I talk about a great podcast. He was my favorite, probably in the eighties. I love this WWF run. Ric Flair. Oh boy, the Nature Boy, probably the greatest of all time because he made others look good. He'll admit that he wasn't that good. He did the same moves. But he made other people look so good. He carried Kerry Von Eric, evidently, like when Kerry <laughs> was drunk and stuff. He That's according to him. But yeah. he stayed too long at the party. The end of the, the TNA run, I didn't really have a problem with so much because. But this, what he's doing now, I he's just he I stayed agree. too long at the party, and you that's gotta, why yeah. he's kind of falling for number one. But if you would have asked me probably about ten years ago, it would have been Flair because. There was nobody better in the 80s than Flair. When I was watching the Von Erics, and I remember seeing Ric Flair for the first time, I was asking my buddy, Who, who's this dude? And of course, you know, my buddy's like, oh, Ric Flair, he's a expletive, you know. Well, I won't spell it out. <laughs> and I was like, well, he's with chicks. How can he be that? He had the mink joke. He had the, the 80s ladies, to quote a Kiss song, unreleased. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Ric Flair, I was like, that's who I was like, I know this guy's somebody. Mm -hmm. And that what got me into the NWA and stuff like that. When I who is this guy? But to travel like he did in the territories. Yep. I mean, you talk about wrestlers get a lot of time off now, but the guy lived it. Yeah. I mean, did. coming back from back surgery and everything, I can't say enough great things about him. Yeah. And it's kind of hard for me to put him in number three, but I just think Austin and Sean and my list have kind of gone up on him but to me the greatest the greatest thing of the 80s he had a good run in the 90s too but i think i think wcw wcw screwed him when he was you know jim hurt jim hurt stuff. yeah yeah but that's I, mine and that's that my that rick flair is rick flair number three for me i i have him as my number one. Oh yeah i can see that that was my number one um for all the reasons that you said and then some, I mean, he, he to me, he epitomizes everything an amazing wrestler can be. He, he was a great wrestler. He was a great on the mic. I mean, you can count, he was always entertaining. Um, yeah, he's probably, I don't want, if, I hope he doesn't wrestle. I know he's planning on doing it, but man, I, I think this might kill this man, you know, but um, he's one of those guys that's transcended so many generations. I mean, there's even kids today watching wrestling that know who he is to the point to where like, um, one of the warm-ups that my my 13 year old son's football team does is they, they do the flare they do like this thing called you know three three slaps in a flare Woo! they all do and the kids all know what it is and they all know who rick flair is you know and i love watching charlotte because she's becoming like she is like him you know incarnate and in, in, in yeah. it's, it's awesome watching and you know yeah he he, he his one move, remember that one move where he'd go towards the ring, towards the turnbuckles and he'd flip yeah. over and he run away. I mean, he did that in every single match. Um, but he was always a great bleeder too. And so many, I mean, oh, I can think of so many amazing matches with him. And and yeah, I, he's he's probably my favorite that there ever that there ever was. And it, it's, yeah. it's yeah, mine too. But I think it's just he stayed too long at the party, and that just agreed. Agreed. and I think I fell in love. I didn't fall in love with him, but Austin just being gone twenty years and. Maybe yeah. I'll watch. Maybe I'll watch this match, and maybe I'll Flair will be my number one in our next. <laughs> when we do this again right. in two years, right? Right. Well, he gotta is got to be number also one. Also, my number one. Nice. Uh, he nice. was. You know, and and people talk about. Well, 
the, the, it was all <clears throat> excuse me. There was always a discussion about who's better, Flair or Hogan, back in the eighties. Who's the better champion? Gosh. And when you'd say, well, Hogan had the same moves: punch, kick, big boot, leg drop, yeah. or he may do an eye rake. And uh, it said, you know, Flair, and then everybody said, well, Flair does the same match, just like you said, Flair does the same match. But Flair was wrestling night after night in yeah. different towns. You yeah. didn't have the internet. You didn't have Twice all on Sunday. TV. Yeah. Yeah. But one of the best things about Flair, you talked about the little movie did where he went flipped over the yeah. turnbuckle. Yeah. I call it the tuck. Mm-hmm. When he takes a bunch of shots to the head or wherever, and all of a sudden he comes, walk, he walks out like two steps. And oh, he yeah. He just stays first. He dropped, yeah. I love that. And I, when I started doing a lot of editing, this has been, gosh, 18 years ago. Mm-hmm. There were, I made a video for my cousin because he loves Flair. And I took all these clips of Flair tucking <laughs> and I put it to music. And I wish I still had it somewhere where I could get him a hold of it. But it was hilarious. He would tuck. He would get that little look on his face. And he oh, yeah. and oh, there yeah. was one where he was outside the ring at a high school. And he, he was fighting Wyndham. And Wyndham had hit him, knocked him over the rope. And he... He walked out of the ring and he had that look, but Arn Anderson was ringside. Arn Anderson grabbed him around from behind around his waist. And Flair was like, did like this. And Arn Anderson let him go. He took two steps and he still did it face first, right on the gym floor. Oh my God. And Arn just started going doing like this. Oh but my yeah. God. I mean, this was a guy you love to hate. Yeah. You you watched you watched every week to see Flair lose. You wanted to see Flair lose. Mm-hmm. But the Joker would I mean, it, it, he was so talented on the mic. Yeah, I agree, Ward. He's probably he he has stayed too long. You know. Yeah. yeah. This is this is this really worries me. But you know what a lot of people, a lot of the comments you see from other wrestlers, if and I think Flair's made the quote: "If I die in the ring, so be it." You know. He took a couple bumps from Jay Lethal. That was pretty cool. I mean, yeah. That was that's another guy that did impressions of Ric Flair was great. In oh TNA. yeah, that that exchange between them and TNA was, oh was gosh. great. But you know, Flair, I remember when we started when I started watching it was like early '86, late '85, I think. And he still when he started that program with Morton, and the little exchange he had between Morton where he brought out the the training bra and said, "This is your fans, the teeny boppers." Can you imagine that happening today? No, no. There's so many things that just couldn't happen today, you know? But Flair, there was also one exchange that I go back, and I made, and I have a, I think I have it on YouTube, where that was another thing I did. But when Ole split from the horseman, Mm -hmm. and Luger and Orn and Tully were in the ring fighting these three jobbers, and Flair was getting interviewed by, I guess it was Bob Caudle or somebody, and all of a sudden, Ole comes out there. Ole gets in Flair's face. Ole rips Flair's clothes off. The horse, the rest of the horsemen come down. Ole runs off. Flair sits down there for a minute like he's he's out of it. Gets back up. You know how the gym doors, like, do you have double gym doors where you can, run, you can go out of one side and come in the other? Yeah. Yep. Flair takes off running out one door and comes right back in the other. His face is red as a beet. And he goes off. He starts going off. But it, you know, so many classic flair moments. That, but you know, it, just a great. He's a great entertainer. Yep. And a great wrestler. Come back from everything he's came back from. So awesome. My number three mm-hmm. was Arn Anderson. Oh. So, so Joe, your number two. My number two. Okay, this is a guy that has reinvented himself so many times. Um, never seen a man abuse his body more and do, and, and just the risks this guy took for the, for the love, I guess, of the, of the sport, Mick Foley. Wow. (laughs) Mick Foley. I mean, this dude, Cactus Jack, mankind, dude, love you. You just, it was on, on and on. I mean, and the, you know, I think about the, the hell in the cell going off that, I mean, Taking chair shots from the rock, you know, ble- I mean, it just, just insane, you know, losing um, a ear. Exactly. Exactly. Teeth. Um, yeah, although, a, tooth, a tooth coming out your nose. <laughs> a, a tooth out your nose. Um, I think about the, the Cactus Jack days with the, 
the barbed wire matches and the, you know, the exploding things. I mean, this guy's just, just insane. And, and just the sacrifices he made with his body for like, again, just for, for the love of the sport and for the love for the fans and the things that this man would do to give us a show, you know, all the time he makes, makes, yeah, definitely my number two. His book was awesome. The it, have a nice day. Very he so great. Good. Great. He gets up. Intelligent. Yes. Uh, Rick yeah. Flair cut him down saying, you know, Stop, man. I didn't think that was necessary. It was. They're different it styles, was. but there's a hardcore audience too. Absolutely. And, and you know, and, and he's like one of the nicest guy, but he seems to get shit on a lot by Vince, by the other ones. And I mean, I, that stuff he did with the rock on beyond the mat, God, that's hard to watch. That was, I mean, to watch his, his wife and kids in that front yeah. row right there. And that was, that was as real as it gets. That was, I mean, I think the reason he, he gets he gets crapped on is because he is such a nice guy. You can tell yeah. him the dude is just a nice guy. The things he does outside of the ring for, for people in general. Like when, and when Tony Schiavone said that stuff about, you know. Uh, Matt, uh, yeah. Yeah. That was I Bischoff, mean, wasn't it? No, that was Tony Schiavone. Bischoff told Tony Schiavone to say it. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's and right. it was like, I – I I liked I liked him. I liked him as dude. That's love. He was my livelihood. He there. was fun. He and I loved him as Cactus Jack. Great yeah. here. Bang, bang. And yeah, <laughs> and it's just and it's just you know when he got those cheap pops and stuff. Yeah, yeah. and I remember that he's one of the few wrestlers that could go to toe to toe with like a Triple H. Yep. Yeah. And it's yep. just him and The Rock. That stuff was hilarious. Just you, uh, when, uh, yeah. When the, it's your life, and you know, yeah, and, yes. Yeah. Did The Rock right. make you really? Did the, did the Rock make any of our list? That's I didn't make mine. Right. Didn't make no, mine. no. I, I, Steve and I talked about this a few weeks ago when we first talked about doing this this thing. I, I didn't, I wasn't a fan of like Hulk and The Rock and the big. I like guy. The Rock. Yeah. You know, they just don't as a heel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's you know, Foley, but yeah, you want to hear more about Beyond the Map? Listen to episode one of his podcast. He talks a lot about that, about yeah. the uh, the reaction from his kids and how that got blown out of proportion a little bit. But okay, okay, but he did not make my list. Okay, so number two for Warden was Shawn Michaels. Okay, so my number two, mm-hmm. and we've already got your number one. Yeah, up here. So this will close it out right here. My number two is a guy, another guy that Flair made. Uh, one of these guys that went from one extreme to the other, reinventing himself and uh, came from UWF, was one of the few survivors. And I'm talking about Sting. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, to be going from the bleach blonde surfer dude to the crow. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, that class of champions won with him and Flair that went to a time limit draw. Mm-hmm. You hear your Sting talk about it. Flair made, made it for me, but Sting carried it to another level with himself. He was Mr. WCW. He yep. was always loyal to him as long as they were around. He always, you know, and you know, Vince had made offers to him. He had to have it. Yeah. Vince, a big dude, face paint. Vince had to love that. Yeah. Dude yep. can still go today. Dude's still doing good today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean he's he's at AEW with with uh, Darby Darby, Darby Allen, Allen. Mm-hmm. and who knows what would have happened in WWF if he hadn't got hurt against Seth Rollins. Right. I was always hoping, and I was hoping when he finally went to WWF for a WrestleMania match, Sting and Undertaker. Cool. Can you imagine the build up for that? Mm-hmm. And that would have been incredible. And I think that was, I think that was, it was headed that way because he said, when Sting got hurt against Rollins, he said, if I had this surgery, it'll be over. Mm. But I'm holding out hope for another match. And I think he was talking about The Undertaker. But, wow. you know, he, he finally got the belt against Flair, mm-hmm. the big rivalry with Flair. I yep. mean, that was always back and forth. That was yep. like when Dusty left, it was it turned into Sting and Flair. Yep. Um, and people were always talking about Luger because Luger had the better physique and all this. Sting could re- out wrestle Luger. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, Luger, Luger had his his move. No offense to Luger, but you know, Luger was yeah, but Luger had better hair, dude. That's what's important. <laughs> 
You want to? Hey, you want to do a drinking game, Warden? No, I don't drink. No? I don't drink anymore. <laughs> okay, I gave it up. <laughs> yeah, you, anybody out there wants to do a drink game? Watch a Lex Luger match, and take a drink every time he readjusts himself. Hey, you got a body like that, dude. I'd be doing it too. I'd never leave the I house mean, probably. Yeah. He's constantly reaching down there, dude. Hey, man. True. It's true. You mentioned it the other day. I was watching. I've been going through all these old star cases. I don't before. know. I don't know, Stevie. You mentioned Nikita Koloff than that. I, I, I think your next uh, list may be a little bit off color. Yeah, it may be. Maybe, maybe. But yeah, the stuff like that, when I've been, you know, following wrestling for years and, and some of these people that you follow on Twitter and Facebook, they point this stuff out to you and you're like, Nice. Really? Who took the time to come up with this? Right, right, right. So that does our top oh, yes. ten wrestlers list. All right. So to, let's look at to recap. Let's look at, let's do Joe's. Okay. Number ten, Randy Savage. Mm -hmm. Number nine, Snooker. Mm -hmm. Number eight, Arn Anderson. Number seven, Steve Austin. Number six, the Road Warriors. Number five, Shawn Michaels. Number four, The Undertaker. Number three, Triple H. Number two, Mick Foley. Number one, Ric Flair. Then Warden. Kevin Von Erich at number 10. Kevin Nash at number nine. You got to thank for Kevin's. Jake <laughs> Roberts at number eight. Roddy Piper. You saved us on that at number seven. Yeah. Randy Savage at number six. Triple H at number five. Jericho at number four. Ric Flair at number three. Shawn Michaels at two. And Austin at one. And then mine. The Undertaker at 10. Chris Jericho at nine. Dusty Rhodes at eight, Randy Savage at seven, Ricky Steamboat at six, Steve Austin at five, Shawn Michaels at four, Arn Anderson at three, Sting at two, and Ric Flair at number one. Sting wow. so was, two I, Ric Flair's number one. So, so Flair, Flair made all, all of our list. Yeah. Austin, did Austin make your list? He no, Austin, yeah, Austin made all of our list. Yep. Michaels made all of our list. Arn Anderson go. didn't. Arn Anderson made me and Yours. Joe's. Undertaker made me and Joe's. Let's see. Triple H made Ward and Joe's. Savage yeah. made all of our list. Steamboat, no. Road Wars, no. Piper, no. Yeah, so we had we we had some overlapping stuff. Uh, yep. Yep. So what we'll do now is we'll put these lists out and we'll see who did it best according to the people. The people. J A W. <laughs> Jaw? <laughs> yeah, Jason Allen Warden. Mine, mine is not that good. Slough. S L F. I think it's I think it's pretty telling for the, the state of wrestling today that that our our lists, all of our combined lists feature very few guys that are still wrestling. Yeah, um, Jericho. Except for Chris <laughs> and maybe Ric Flair, maybe if if we want to yeah. count that, you know. That's it. Yeah. And, you know, like I, like I was saying, it, it's it's kind of tough to watch now. You know, I mean, there's some characters out there, but I'm not going to put Roman Reigns or Seth Rollins or even Cody on a list like this. You know, not yet. Anyway, you know, maybe someday, maybe 10 years from now, Cody makes this list, but probably not, you know. Probably, probably not. Not over these guys. Yeah. He, no. he would have to really, really do it. So that's going to do it for tonight. I mean, we've we've had a two-hour show, which has been great. I've enjoyed it. You know, good Joe, we'll have you back on again soon. Absolutely. Yeah, nice meeting you, Joe. It was you great too. having you on here. This was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this. Thanks for asking just, me to do it. I will just have to boycott Dallas Cowboy Talk the next time we have you on. <laughs> Look We're at Warden. About... What does that mean? Right, 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 right. I'm used to it. I'm used yeah, to it. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> at least he – well, never mind. I'm not going to say anything. But <laughs> – I've I've already forgot what what our next episode is supposed to be about, Warden. You know, George Strait, top ten George Strait. Is that it? That's it. You're right. Top yeah. ten George Strait song. I still got a, I still got some homework I got to do on our open. I I do too. I just watched Pure Country the other night. By the way, again. So. Uh, so okay. Yeah. Great movie. We were the actually talking one, about the second was, one's horrible. What? Don't watch the second one. It's horrible. Oh, I have watched it. Yeah, you're right. It's horrible. Uh, I feel like I was at church. I, think a, I actually think there's a third one. Yeah. 
Lord. But anyway, we were actually talking about North Dallas 40 last night when I was talking to Joe. Oh, I yeah. Watch that. I still need to watch that. It's good. You don't know what you're missing. It's really yeah. good. Yeah, it's good. So, guys out there in YouTube land or Apple land, follow us. Subscribe to us. Give us a five-star review. Don't boycott the show, Brian. <laughs> uh, we did put Roddy Piper in. I didn't have to pay Warden to put him in either at the last Because Piper's one of the greatest. Yeah, and, and Brian will be happy with that. We're going to get, you know, but follow us, subscribe to us. And if, you know, we've got the On The Fly fa Facebook page. We've got that 80s page. And we've got all things, what is it, rock, hard, rock and metal? All things rock, hard rock, and metal. Right. That's the, right. That ace page yeah. is really blowing up, man. We got over 200 like in yeah. a, of a yeah. couple of days. And just like that, yeah. I know. It it's would, awesome. It was, Keep it up. I saw that. Are you on Facebook, Joe? I am, yep. Okay. We'll have to friend you then. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Please do. So, Joe. And send you an invite for our pages. <laughs> I <Yeah>. will. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Fusion Tech, yeah. thank you again. That's yes, uh, thank If you, you guys are wondering what we're talking about, Joe, Joe's company actually, that's how we got to know Joe. Joe's company actually sponsored uh, the question of the week on uh -huh. Shout Out Loudcast. And, uh -huh. and I know Joe was like, these guys are not going to give up on the old Fusion Tech thing. Because every time I saw him, it's Fusion Tech Joe. <laughs> 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 that caught on. It's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty cool how that caught on. Because even the guys were telling me when they were down at um, Creatures Fest, people were walking up to him going, yeah, Fusion Tech. I'm like, are you yeah, yeah Fusion awesome. Tech? That's hilarious. Yeah, so That's hilarious. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully sometime we'll be able to hear that on Shout Out Loudcast. So you guys, like we talked about episodes before, keep those guys in your prayers. Uh keep Tom and his family in your prayers. I know the GoFundMe was a big success, but keep them in your prayers and uh throw in some podcast love out there for them. Shout out loudcast. If good time to check out the back episodes if you need to catch up. Uh, if you want to check out some some great podcasts, we talked about the wrestling podcast. Mick Foley, Arn Anderson, Tony Schiavone is what happened when uh, the DDP and uh, Jake the Snake one. Gosh, who else did we leave out, Warden? Did you, that? you say a Flair? Flair's got yeah, one. Flair's, Flair's got, got one. one yeah, yeah, Flair. Flair did have one with Mark Madden, and then Flair and Mark Madden got crossed the log, <laughs> so they dropped him, and now Conrad Thompson is back doing Flair's. Okay. But yeah, they're they're good ones. Uh, if you're in the music side, yeah. right between the eyes podcast, playlist wars, podcast rock city. That's I'm not gonna geek. say that's what geek. Yeah, I'm not gonna say that other one though. You can say that one if you want to, Ward. No, I'm no. Oh. <laughs> you said it earlier. <laughs> oh, yeah, but that I wasn't cutting anybody down. I was just. Uh, I'm not cutting them down, but I'm just not mentioning them. There yeah. you go. That's my choice your choice just forget right. stevie you won we win we win <laughs> <laughs> don't forget the macho man we have say love that shirt. redneck macho man love that shirt all right guys that's gonna do it for tonight you guys have a great week and we'll see you next week on the fly see ya thanks guys